Uh, good evening. Per the open meeting laws of the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we are being audio and video recorded this evening. We um, have a variance request uh, for 56 uh, Priscilla Ave, scheduled for 7 p.m. Is the applicant here? Come on down. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to read into public notice in. in. Go right ahead. The notice of public hearing for guaranteed builders and developers at 7.08 p.m. for a variance pursuit of MGL Chapter 40A, Section 10 as amended, and Section 5, F5A of the Norfolk Zoning Bylaws to allow the construction of a 20 by 24 garage, which will be closer to the side and rear setback lines than a distance equal to the height of such accessory building. The property is located 56 Bristol Ave, Assessors Map 4, Block 13, Block 28, in the R2 Zoning District. Thank you, Chris. Um, do you have the uh, application? Yes. Right here. I don't have the one Right here. No, it's, it's in this packet right here. To this one? Yeah, it's flipped down a couple of pages. Keep flipping. So flip, flip one more. Right there we go. Okay. Oh, it's, it's hiding on this. <coughs> All right. And the criteria worksheet is the next page. Thank you. Okay, sir, please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. My name is Bill Pibus. I'm a permit coordinator for Guaranteed Builders. As stated in the application, we're looking for some side lot relief for the building and some rear lot relief. As stated, it's, it's, it's a pre-existing non-conforming lot and the hardships primarily are the location of the septic system and the existing house with its appendages. Um, as stated, we, we want to construct a two-story 20 by 24 two-car garage with a one door, a one overhead door in the front. Um, the <coughs> stairs for the second floor are located inside the building and are protected from the weather as, as they are in the inside. Uh, we're looking for a side back relief. Um, the proposed building is <coughs> five feet from the lot line, so we're looking for a 20 foot relief there. The rear lot is uh, located, I think, about 18 feet from the from the rear lot, and we're looking for a relief basically of seven feet to com conform to the building code. Um, as stated, you have some um, lot uh, um, locations on the plan that was submitted to you. Also, I think that the building itself, the plans are located for you on the As stated, it's a pre-existing non-conforming lot to begin with. Yeah, there is a single family dwelling on the property. And there is basically one area that we can locate the particular garage on. Uh, as stated, it's a fairly small lot. It is kind of uh, located within the within the perim perimeters of the setback, but the, the the relief needs to be for this proposed garage. 
there is no garage on the property as, as it exists. And the owners would like to get their vehicles out of the weather. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's uh, open up questions from the board. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, since I don't see a uh, plot plan of the, um, the abutting lot, is there a structure on that lot and how many feet from the lot line and how many feet from the proposed structure will that be? The side lots are located, buildings are located within the perimeters of the, of the setback. Um, the actual distance uh, is not stated on our plan, and, but we've had conversations with the neighbors, and they have not uh, voiced any any objections to what we're proposing. Question from the floor, Mr. Chairman. Is that as a follow-up? Is that it? Yeah, let's um, let's get through the board questions first. So, so I'm just I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, um, you said it falls within the setback. So, what is the distance in the house next to it? I don't have those figures with me, sir. Okay. Well, he said it falls within the setback. Does that mean it's 25 feet within the property in both cases? Yes. And is that true? Both. We, we okay, we'll find out. I think. I think we'll find we're gonna, out. We're going to find out in a second, and and uh, so therefore, if it was, if it was, uh, and it met the setback requirements, then um, we're talking about 30 feet between two structures. Right. And the second question I had is this garage. The upstairs of this garage was that meant to be living quarters? No, sir. Not heated. And no water. No living, no living quarters. Okay. Mr. Chairman, to follow up on that. How tall would the proposed garage be? 22 feet. 22 feet in height? I believe so. Noticing, um, it says that the applicant seeks relief for a 20 by 40 garage. I think that's a mistake. That's a mistake. 20 by 22, yeah. right? Okay. 2210. And the existing shed, how big is that? Uh, are there any, uh, what are the soil conditions for this lot? What, what type of soil? I don't have those figures in front of me. There's no basement to this garage. Hmm. Okay. We're just trying to determine if there's any underlying conditions that would. As far as I'm aware, there is no underlying. Okay. Okay. And what about the topography? What's the uh, topography like? Is it flat? Is it? Uh, it's real flat. <clears throat> and the shape of the lot you would describe as a uh, rectangle. Okay. And the septic was put in two thousand thirteen. board is the property yeah I see the two lots that are adjacent to it and I see Priscilla Ave what board is it on the other side 
What what? What what borders the property on the other side of it? On the back side, you're saying? Or yeah, on the back side. Um, it looks like there's another property there. Is there a property there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Shown that way. Council, any questions? Can they show that about it? Um, this reminds me of. Uh, Shouldn't they show the apartment we just looked at? Okay. 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 You said a exact same. I'm sorry, I think it was the same. I'm worried about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Miss, uh, that doesn't fall into that category. Okay. Chris, any other follow up questions? Nope. I'm good. Joe? Yeah, I'm okay. Gentlemen, any other questions? Good. Good. Okay. Um, at this time, we'll open up if there are any abutters or people who are interested in this uh, variance request. Yes, sir. Please just state your name. Yeah. Uh, Wayne Sunquist. Wayne Sunquist. I own the lot to the right of the property that, and I just purchased also lot behind where he wants to build. I purchased this property while I'm in the process of it. Just waiting for it to be um, deeded. Um, and for the simple reason that I wanted more property so I could put an addition on my house and I'd be in within parameters of everything. Uh, and as far as talking to you um, or somebody talking to the abutter, I, this was the first, uh, when I got the letter was the first I knew of it. Nobody spoke to me that I know. Okay. And I've been there for 25 years, 30, almost 30 years. Been uh, in the town an awful lot for over huh, 60, 60 years. I know nothing of it. So you own the house to the right? And the lot behind it, yes. And where are you, in the, where are you with, the, with purchasing the lot in the rear? Have you, do you have a purchase and sale agreement or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And how far away from the property line is your house on the right? That's where the eight, seven or eight feet is and the 25. They're both abutting my property, the front. So your house is 32 feet away from his or from the front lot line or? I don't know exactly. Roughly. 32, 30? Less than 10? <laughs> Probably. Less than 10? No, no, oh. no, no. Okay. That's right, right here? No, right here. So he wants to put a heel right here. He owns here, he's buying here. Yeah, right, right here, right here. The PNS is right here. Yeah, right. but his house is right over here, somewhere between 10 and 20 feet. I guess what, what I'd like to know is the distance between the two structures. He's between 10 and 20 feet, so he's in the of the setback. Unless well, it's it might a be a pre-existing pre pre pre-existing, yeah, non-conforming pre lot. Non-conforming lot, yeah. pre-existing non-conforming lot. You should be able to find that out. Like I say, I didn't, I knew nothing of this until I got the letter, so. Okay, and what's your feeling about the uh, applicant's uh, proposed garage? Well, like I said, I just purchased another piece of property, so that if I, I plan future expansion, and I wanted to make sure I was within all the parameters. That's why I purchased another piece of property there, the pr piece of property behind him. Okay. 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 All right. Any other questions from abutters or persons of interest? All right. Um, Let's see this. We need to go see this. We need to go see this. Mm -hmm. well, I think we're going to also re have to require a uh, survey of the uh, of the distance from the exact distance from the proposed structure and the adjoining lot existing structure on the lot to the right. Okay. So you, you, we could we could do a motion to continue the public hearing and have them come back next month with that information. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll make a motion. To continue the public hearing for a variance request with regard to chapter 40A, section 10, as amended in F5A of the Norfolk Zoning Bylaw, to continue the public hearing until June 7th, 2017, for review of the adjoining properties, the distances, as such. Second. 
All in favor? What time? Amy, do you have, what do we have scheduled for June already? I know we have a couple. We have uh, De Placido. Oh, actually, we just have the De Placido on the 7th, 15 on June 7th, so I think we could do a 7 o'clock. Okay. We're about the other thing, the villages. Hmm? We're about the uh, villages. Well, we'll that'll be after, so 7 o'clock. Okay. So at 7 o'clock p.m. 7 o'clock p.m. Second. Okay. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The butter can't make it back there. I have a wedding. Um, can you provide us the information that we're looking for? Well, he wouldn't. I would he wouldn't. Applicant. It would be the applicant. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, can you provide us the information so that your neighbor can see it? He can't be here. Does he know the information that we're looking for? Yeah. Do, do, do you understand we, we are <coughs> requesting a survey? All right, to determine uh, both the lot line distances um, uh, of, of the proposed, you said, was, was five feet, and then the lot line distance of the existing structure on the abutters to their lot lines so that we can determine the distance between two structures. You want both sides? Both sides, and if there's something in the back within 25 feet, yes. Okay. Correct? Is that what you're looking for too? No, right. hmm? Did you want to do a site visit between now and the seventh as well? What do you guys think? Sure. Uh, excuse me. Can I just ask a question? It's, it's now if it was if he was given the variance and I was to go put an addition on within the parameters, would that affect my, me as far as well his is to my my addition would be too close to his. You understand what I'm saying? If I decided to add on that side of the house, mm -hmm. but was still in with my 25 foot parameter, but he was. No, that's not going to affect him. But, no. but, but, but he was within the 50 foot setback between structures. It's a pre-existing non-conforming. So I don't believe. Have you, when you purchased this property, did you talk to an attorney about what the zoning bylaws were with in, with in mind that you're thinking of expanding your property? Because I'm speaking to you. You have a non-conforming lot. Yes. You have a non-conforming lot. I have three lots. I've got, a, I've got three lots there right now. How do we know he has a non-conforming lot? Here, we don't well, know. I'm assuming yours is not a non-conforming lot. I'm assuming most of the properties over there are non-conforming. No, so how many square feet do you have? On the initial lot? I have, I purchased five lots. Right, right. And I just purchased another one. Okay. Uh, 30, 20, 20, 30 years ago. Okay. So the question he has is, is, is if he's within a 50 foot between structures, even right. if he's, even if he does not fall into his own 25 foot setback, the question is, is would, would he be in trouble as a result of this garage being placed here? If he's, if he's, with, if he's beyond the 25-foot the mark, he's fine. Okay, so that, that was his question. He yeah. is, even though there's a 50-foot setback between buildings. That's only in... It, uh, that's, that's, that's residential structures. Yeah. This is an accessory building. Yeah, that's right. That's the difference. This is an accessory building. Okay. So okay. it would not be an issue. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Okay, so you're on for June 7th, 7 o'clock p.m.? Very good, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy, you'll be... Sh yes, uh, yeah, yeah, Yes, and you'll make sure that this gentleman gets the information uh, so that he can respond if this information is... Why don't you provide Amy with your email address and she'll make sure she provides that to you as well. Your mail address. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Getting harder. Joe is getting harder.
I mean, even I've gone through an iPhone 7. Did you get a new phone? Yes, look at this. Oh my God. Can you believe it? Yeah, my structure. Jeez. You know why I didn't know why? I can't travel to Europe with my phone. I can see. I can not appreciate that they want to set a garage in. I can appreciate Oh, you got the gold case. I said, I got the gold case. However, all right, quite frankly, if there's a structure and the structure's also, non conforming mm -hmm. right. here, then two structures be No. Right. I think the separation like needs that. to be between right. dwelling right. units well, and no garages. That, that's, that's what Chris is yeah. saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You think we had the We simply denied it because it was going to be. Uh, Are you going to build? All right. Five to ten feet from the lot line. It's enough to do the structure. So look at this. But, but you had a. Uh, you had it. I don't know if the lot was non-conforming, but the way the structure was. But also, it wasn't in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. The neighborhood yeah. had yeah. twelve one-car garages, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. and so um, and I talked to Bob. I said, you know, and he said, well, if it's not two cars, it's not worth it. I said, that's your choice. Right. I said, if you had come for a one-car garage. And looking for, I think it would have been a six or seven foot variance. I said, I would have said myself, and I said, gee, that seems really okay. Yeah. Um, but by asking for a two car garage, they should have done there. They should have done this before they reinforced that. There's a little um, side porch that's unfounded, yeah. there's no yeah. foundation under it. Yeah. They should have thought about that a little bit more in advance because then you could have And really, they could have still the garage on the So. This is at five seven three. I understand. Yeah. We, I understand how you saw meeting house, which is important, right? Which we like. Right. I understand how. I understand and we don't understand. Right. Well, but I don't understand how you can. Which is two point six five. Right. Again, we like. So these two are there. We can't put it around. Yeah, we're like with this. Two, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't see it. His, 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 his real case is hardship. Hardship being the second yeah, case. Put it in 2013. To me, the basic continuation is the hardship. Yeah, right. I don't understand the hardship. If the septic was put in. Because if you, if you look at this. Yeah, we're gonna, as soon as Ray comes in, we're going to get started. Yeah, we'll do it in the next couple of weeks. You bought a house in a garage. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? So, so you, you can't create your own house. That's true. You know, so I, I really yep. I have some difficulty understanding the logic behind it. I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Okay. Ray, what's here? Hi. Can we meet again? Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, this hearing tonight is a continuation of the comprehensive permit for 25 Rockwood Road. Uh, before we get started this evening, uh, the board wanted to give you some, uh, the applicants, some feedback on where we, our current thinking and, and our current feeling about, about the project. We think it's an appropriate time to kind of weigh in on what, what our thoughts are. 
and in consultation uh, with the town planner, uh, our engineers, and uh, our council, um, we are we have several concerns about the project. Uh, density is at the top of that list. Uh, if you look at other 4DB projects that we've approved and are under construction currently in Norfolk, um, the units per acre are much less than what you're proposing um, based on what you currently have, 32 units on the acreage that you have. It's 5.3 units per acre. And if you look at some of the other projects that have been recently been approved or are already uh, built, uh, 106, 108 is 4.4. Holbrook, which is Pin Oaks, 3.4 uh, units per acre. Uh, Meeting House Road, which is the uh, complex up here on Town Hill, uh, 3.6 and 2.6 units per acre. And um, Cleveland Street is uh, a little, is, although it's approved, is a little on the high side at 4.97. But um, if you look at the, the past history of what we've approved here in Norfolk, the, um, this exceeds anything that we've done so far. So what we wanted to do tonight is to get some <coughs> issues out on the table and um, start to having a discussion about what our concerns are so that we can craft a project that um, the town is comfortable with and, and that you're comfortable with. Uh, some of the general issues that, that we're having, and, and Ray will weigh in, Beta Bill will weigh in, and, and our council will weigh in on some of the specifics, but um, the um, short driveways that you have are a concern of ours. There are no walkways. Uh, on the streets, those are a concern of ours. Uh, the open area is, is very small. Uh, snow, snow storage, we think, is extremely limited. Um, the entrance and the exit to the, the project is um, uh, still of a concern of ours. The, the chief of police has weighed in and uh, believes that the access and egress to Rockwood is, is um, challenging. And um, so, you know, generally speaking, it, it, the project is congested from, from our perspective. You've got um, some high retaining walls, the septics are pushed out to the edges, and it's kind of pushing the limits on everything uh, on, on this property. So, um, it, Ray, if you want to kind of go into some of the, a little bit more specifics about uh, what we've been talking about, that would be helpful. Sure. Yeah, well, yeah. planning is all about trying to make everything work, trying to fit all the different uh, uh, issues that go on with a piece of property and, and try to make it all work. Um, this property is doing that, trying to do that, and, and there's, there's things that are happening here that, um, you know, from the bird's eye view, it doesn't seem like it's such a big deal, but as you start to really think about the property, you, you, you start looking at issues like th this uh, retaining walls on the uh, north and south border of the property. Um, uh, the north side is not such a, such a, a larger issue, but uh, on the south side, you've got neighbors now that will have uh, right on, along the property line uh, four foot high retaining walls that they'll, they'll look at now uh, that they've never had to look at in the past. So we're trying to balance out the, the, the change in topography of the site by putting in these retaining walls to, to make everything work. Um, I don't think that's a, such a great idea. I don't think that's something that the neighbors uh, aesthetically want to look at. Um, part of those retaining walls are to, to pick up septic and uh, stormwater design. Uh, you've got stormwater and septic basins that are uh, along the borders of uh, your, your north and south property lines. Uh, don't think that's such a great place to, to put those things. Uh, one septic system is uh, septic system number three. It's at the lowest point uh, on the site, one of the lowest points on the site. I don't know what the water tables are there. I didn't, didn't take, a, take a look at that, but um, it, it brings to me questions. It brings questions about how will that work out in, in the future and uh, you know, in the long term. Is this design going to work out for the, the folks that end up owning this property? Um, there's uh, a stone wall, you know, this is just one, one issue that I had, there was a stone wall proposed in the architecturals along the front of the property. Um, I'm not sure anybody knows this, but uh, Norfolk has, uh, this, the National Historic uh, Districts have designated uh, this street, Rockwood Road, as a National Historic District. Uh, that was done last year. 
um, not sure that this stone edifice would uh, would go in, you know, coincide with the historic district. Um, I, I'm not sure that that makes sense. I, I personally, I, I don't think it, it was a good idea. Um, I think maybe uh, opening up that area, keeping it keeping it uh, grassed, and, and maybe a fence works out pretty good. I, I looked at units one, two, and three, which are the ones that are along the street. Um, I said this before, I'll say it again. I don't think those units should be there. I, I don't think that that area works well for this site and it works well for the, the uh, neighbors around there and for the district. Um, there's, talking about roadways, um, we have a 500 foot cul-de-sac rule on our subdivision regulations. That's a 4.1.14.9.1. And the, uh, basically what it says is you can't exceed 500 feet for any cul-de-sac. Uh, I think and this is supposed to be measured from the, uh, the uh, budding road to the end of the cul-de-sac, the paved portion of the cul-de-sac. So we're well in excess of the 500 feet. Um, I personally think that the cul-de-sac should go. I, I just, that's my suggestion. And uh, figure out a different way to make that work out. The other thing is you've got 22 foot wide travel ways. I know in our previous approval with Boyd's Crossing, we, we allowed that. Um, and further inspection of, of 24, 22 foot wide travel ways, when you've got parking that comes out at a 90 degree angle and you're trying to make that swing, um, you've got other traffic coming in this, the other direction, the extra two feet makes sense. Most parking lots that you park in use a 24 foot wide um, aisle way to go through. Um, those are the things that I, I picked up that I thought uh, kind of uh, don't work on this on this site. Don't work on this this property, and uh, it leads me to think that there needs to be a redesign. There needs to be a reduction in, in some of the units so that you can make some of these things work. Um, these are the things that I could point to. And, you know, the feeling I get when I look at this site is that there's just too much trying to happen in this in this location. To me, as a planner, it just sounds like we're we're trying to make everything fit. You know, and and by making everything fit. We're not coming up with a good plan. We're not coming up with a good design here. So that, those, that's my my feeling on it. Okay. Bill, did you want to add in any comments? Um, well, we, we did review it. Um, supplemental information that was provided, uh, both the, uh, the site plans as well as traffic and landscaping. Um, and we've provided letters to the boards, or to the board about those issues. Uh, I would say in, in terms of the site itself, kind of looking at it holistically, it is, it is very dense. I think everybody recognizes that. And um, it is gonna have to be essentially clear cut. There's not gonna be any existing vegetation uh, that's gonna be saved. You know, I, I think from a strictly engineering constructability point of view, I think, I think it can be constructed, um, but certainly there's units that are very close uh, to the property line. Um, Ray pointed out the ones that out front, I'll say Unit 1 is fairly close to Rockwood Road. Um, unit 5 is about 10 feet off of the, the property line on the, the northerly side. Again, it, I think constructible, but holistically doesn't make sense. Um, unit 6 and 8 are close to the retaining wall that's proposed on the, the southerly side that, that Ray mentioned. Um, and <coughs> the, the retaining wall that's abutting the, the MBTA property. The roadway does come right up to that, that retaining wall. Um, again, if, if you can get permission from the MBTA to construct it, it's constructible. Uh, I think there was a question, would it be better if it was, was set back further from the, the MBTA property? Um, it's gonna have to be protected with some kind of guardrail system um, and being right against the, the property line and right against the wall um, snow removal may, may be an issue when you're plowing that. So um, yeah. those are some of the things we, we saw as we kind of took a, a larger look at it. Okay, thank you, Bill. Mike, I had one more that I forgot to mention. Sure. There's an overflow. I, I know uh, in, in Beta's uh, review, they talked about having overflow pipes for the stormwater systems, the underground stormwater systems. And in two locations, they installed, th they, they're proposing those um, along the gross property line. So the gross property is the one that touches the uh, MBTA and is the, the, <coughs> the closest one to the train station. Um, so there's two overflow pipes that are basically 
going to be dumping onto their property. I'm not sure that's a good idea. I, I just point that out and, and, and hope that we can come up with a better solution. Okay. Chris, would you want to add anything? Yeah, I think we. I think a big piece of this, and Ray's touched on, Bill has, is the cul-de-sac is a problem. Uh, the fire department has spoken to it, that they there's no exit out. Um, it does violate the uh, bylaw with regard to cul-de-sacs. Uh, I think going down Rockwood Road, the units on the right-hand side are not in character. Yes, we have a couple of historic units that are on the street, but to have three units right on the road at Rockwood Road, it just it doesn't seem to fit. These are not going to be little, small ranch houses. So it's not going to be fitting in that area. And uh, I like the idea of tying in Hillcrest. I think that would be a, that's a that's a noble um, change. I think that would improve both water going to both sites. But I think it again, this is a it, it's far too dense. It is far too dense. It is uh, no matter how you look at it, the cul-de-sac has got to probably be reduced. Um, I think the units along Rockwood Road have got to be reduced. And um, I'm still concerned with some of those test pits. Maybe Bill can talk a little more about those, the test pits on that right side, the septic system that's going to be close to Rockwood Road. Uh, those, are my, those are my key concerns. I really think we're, um, we're pushing the limit. Dan, was from a legal <coughs> perspective, were there some things that you spotted that uh, you wanted to raise? I think I can ask some questions as we go through the presentation from the applicant, the peer reviewer. Um, just looking at this from a 10,000 foot level, I, I think, you know, in, in reviewing the correspondence that's come in from since the last meeting, um, I think that there's a real concern about water on the site and the ability of the project to infiltrate as much as they're planning to with the stormwater and septic, uh, all in, in a very tight manner. And there's really no margin for error. A lot of these uh, test pits were showing uh, seasonal high groundwater uh, four, five, six feet below the surface. Um, and so there really is just a bare minimum separation between the bottom of these chambers, the bottom of the septic systems, and the seasonal high groundwater for several of these systems, not all of them, but, but many of them. Um, I mean, most notably, the, the septic system that, that uh, Ray mentioned uh, is at the very low point of the project site. And uh, the test pit indicated that the the closest te test pit, which is not actually in the septic location, but it's, it's near it, was showing uh, groundwater but roughly four feet below the surface. Um, so it just tells you that, that that could potentially be a problem. And so if if any of this guesswork is incorrect, and, and this is guesswork, we don't, this isn't a perfect science estimating where groundwater levels are because it fluctuates all the time, it changes from year to year, it changes from month to month. So if any of this is off, then this isn't going to work, and it's going to result in, in water flowing in undesirable locations. So the, the problem is that, you know, you've got a septic, for example, in that low point. Where do you move it? Um, there's not a lot of other places on the site to move it. And I think the, the comment that was made that maybe if this wasn't so dense and we had more open space, then there would be additional areas to put things like septics and stormwater so, for example, if something fails in year five or something, you got somewhere else to put it that maybe has a better separation to groundwater. Um, and that, so I think that that general comment kind of leads to a conclusion that this site, this project, would probably be a lot better if it wasn't so um, in, intense of the use. And it, you know, it, it's not so much how close these buildings are together. That's not really objectionable. I don't think. I think what's objectionable is that the lack of open space. It's just it, it's a very congested site, uh, and if there was more area and space to handle all the water, uh, that would be a vast improvement. On the plus side, uh, we, we've had negative comments. I, I think on the plus side, I think everyone agrees this is a great location for this kind of housing. Yep. Um, it's transportation oriented. You can walk to the train station. It's close to town center. So this is really an ideal location, except for the site distance issue at Rockwood. That's not ideal. But aside from that, this location itself is, is a great location. And I think it really deserves attention from us and, and cooperation back and forth with the town departments and the applicants to try to make this thing work. OK, good. Thank you. Uh, other comments? 
I guess I'm, I'm interested in hearing the traffic study. Ask me questions about the traffic study. Okay. All right. All right. So um, to kind of summarize, and there's one other thought that I have as well. The um, you know the uh, access and egress under Rockwood is kind of problematic. I, I've always felt that um, the um, the Medway branch uh, access onto Boardman could be a solution to access onto the property for emergency vehicles. And I haven't talked with, we haven't talked with the selectmen, but my guess would be that before they would give permission to use that road, I think they would want to see some uh, reduction in, in units as, as well. So that's that's the sense I get from uh, from what from what they're thinking, um, but I think that um, that <coughs> bike access is going to be an important solution to trying to make everything work on this project. So I mean, uh, having thrown all this at you, I, I know it's a lot, and probably not what you were expecting tonight. But we wanted to kind of give you an update on what we're thinking, what we're feeling. So I mean, we we pl play poker with our cards face up. We want to throw everything out there so you're aware of what we're what's going through our heads as a board. And um, I think we can do one of two things. Um, we can uh, schedule a, a workshop next week and, and try to start working on some of these issues together collaboratively. Or you can um, go back to the drawing board and come back next month with a, another plan. Uh, we're you know, looking at a reduction of somewhere in the vicinity of 8 to 12 units. and. Um, we can go whatever direction you think would be better for you as the applicant uh, workshop next week or come back with a new plan uh, next month. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, again, Christopher Agostino, counsel for the Village at Norfolk LLC. Um, as you indicated, uh, this is somewhat of a surprise as far as major concerns about density. Um, we'd already gone through uh, one additional plan iteration based on the comments that we had heard at the first hearing and then again at the second hearing. Um, this plan set, uh, dated May 11th, uh, consolidated a lot of the comments that came up imi initially, particularly about emergency access um, and stormwater management. And uh, as you see, the major change is that cul-de-sec, and now we're hearing uh, potential concerns from the board about the cul-de-sac, um, even though we had vetted uh, that issue uh, with the fire department, and we thought we got some feedback that that was preferable. Uh, understanding that from our perspective as the applicant, we don't have the right uh, without some town grant to use that uh, back road as emergency access. So we're working with what uh, we have available um, and, and putting forward uh, the applicant's proposal for a project that will work. And I think, um, as you heard from the town's peer review consultant, um, and as is evident from the peer review documentation that had gone back and forth, based on this May 11th plan, uh, we wouldn't propose something that's not constructible. And at least preliminarily, a lot of the issues that we're hearing about density are related to concerns about potential engineering uh, hurdles, such as uh, dealing with wastewater, stormwater management, and at least preliminarily, um, density and those issues are not in conflict. We can, we can at least from a preliminary point of view, construct it at this density and go forward with final plans. Now at the final planning stage, I think one of the open questions was groundwater mounding. So we'll do a groundwater mounding analysis, and if that reveals during final planning that we are too dense in areas and we need additional room to allow for uh, some of the additional stormwater and wastewater effluent to um, permeate into the soil, then those types of things would be handled. Um, if we're talking about a redesign um, that would eliminate eight to 12 units, in, in doing that, um, you know, that would be a, a pretty substantial engineering change that would change a lot of the conceptual work that's gone into this to date. So, um, if that's the direction we're going in, you know, I think that's something that we have to take back first before we just say, let's go workshop changing, you know, losing 8 to 12 <coughs> units. But I'm glad we, we got that feedback now before we got through another iteration of the plan. So right. um, definitely appreciate that. I think 
at, at least tonight, um, it would make sense to go forward with some of the more, uh, some of the additional detail that was put into this plan. Because again, this plan uh, consolidates a lot of the engineering comments and feedback that we had initially. So we'd at least like an opportunity to um, hear some of the details from the board's peer review engineer as to what really may be the engineering hurdles that we really want to focus on. I mean, we heard from the board's attorney, uh, but I think the 30,000 foot view from the perspective of the board's peer review engineer and obviously from our engineer is that preliminarily this is constructible. And it being, again, a transit oriented project um, where uh, smart growth guidelines call for more dense development near uh, transit hubs and downtown, or I wouldn't say downtown, but town village centers and those types of things. That's the proposal that we put forth. That's why we did it at this density. Um, so, you know, understanding that that was our mindset and understanding that preliminarily this is constructible, um, if we want to continue along those lines of uh, putting forward a project that complies with the smart growth and is constructible, we'd probably prefer to. Uh, push forward with our proposal at, at this density and then if at final plans we are encountering that a groundwater mounting analysis shows that potentially we do need additional room then maybe at that point it would be appropriate to come back to the board um, you know if the Board of Selectmen were to for whatever reason decide that to facilitate uh, this town village environment that you have developing here in Norfolk they would uh, seek to potentially do something different with access, then maybe we could consider that. Uh, but as we stand here, or as we're here tonight, I think um, you know, we're, not, we're not putting something forward that we don't think can comply with the state standards. And then as far as um, you know, the comment that it's, it's questionable or that there might be problems going forward, I, I would you know, still, and I think I described this at the outset, um, point out that the project has to comply with all applicable state standards. And those state standards are imposed um, at a very high design level that takes into account a lot of the unknown. And oftentimes in what are described as uh, marginal sites with quote unquote high groundwater, water, although four feet down is, I mean that's, that's like a great site for you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great site um, with four foot uh, separation of groundwater, but uh, the state standards are such that, and, and the peer review process is such that if there's a real concern from the town about design and density just in and of itself, we'll talk about that. But I would not, at this point, say lose 12 units because of engineering concerns, particularly where we've had a comment that engineering-wise, preliminarily, it's constructible. So. Planning, absolutely. We, we want good planning, which is why we've proposed a transit-oriented, um, denser-than-normal development. Uh, you know, we, we talked about some of the other densities of the 40B projects. Um, this one being closer to the town center, we might get something on the order of five. As a matter of fact, the old rule of thumb, and I know Attorney Hill likes this one, is, is eight units per acre. We're at five units per acre. So we're not, you know, we want to have quality planning. And uh, we want to continue the conversation. I think it's just a question of how do we um, optimize the process going forward, understanding that if, if the board's uh, request is lose eight units, I think we have to really ask ourselves some serious questions and, and decide where we're going to go with it. Uh, because preliminarily, we've done enough preliminary testing to propose a constructible project. Um, we vetted the cul-de-sac, and as a matter of fact, the cul-de-sac is the result of prior comment. And we vetted that with town safety officials, and that was the preferable conclusion. Uh, if that's not the board's desire, then we, we can continue to discuss that, but I think we uh, need to have an idea. Is it, a, is it a question of constructability, or is it a question of of density in and of itself, and where it's <coughs> density in and, of, in and of itself, if we're talking about a transit-oriented development, um, let's not let's not eliminate units just for the sake of concerns about constructability, where we have comments and feedback that it is constructible. Again, we have to go through final planning, 
Um, final plans would require an expensive groundwater mounting analysis. The groundwater mounting analysis may reveal that we need more space. But just, just looking at it and identifying <coughs> things like uh, groundwater and wastewater management on site is a concern. Um, you know, we need to, I think, go back uh, on our own to consider that and then maybe we, we could get some feedback. But as it stands, we're proposing a transit-oriented development that is constructible from a preliminary perspective and that, yes, is, is more dense than, than uh, you've, you've seen in prior 40B projects, but again, it's below what was a guideline of eight units per acre uh, and under the state <coughs> standards, it's, it's constructible. And we wouldn't propose a project that wasn't constructible. And we wouldn't propose a project that uh, is going to have engineering problems down the line. You know, for instance, reserve area. Reserve area is built in to Title V. You have to have a reserve area within your proposed septic system uh, arrangements. Um, things like stormwater. There was a question of whether or not we were going to tie in to off-site stormwater detention basins. We went back and actually redesigned preliminarily to attenuate stormwater on-site. Um, so engineering we can deal with. But if there is a if there is a, uh, a real aversion on the on the part of the town that says this is bad planning, which we don't necessarily agree that it is, but if this is bad planning, um, thank you for uh, bringing that up tonight. We appreciate the feedback. And then you know if if the answer is go figure out how to lose units or come back with some other design, then I think we have to go back as a development team and and do some soul searching on that. Okay. Can I? Yeah, yeah I just want to make a couple points. So, I, I think um, I think we mistake to the, to um, take away from the comments that you heard that this is an issue of constructability. Um, it's it's not simply constructability. It is planning. Um, the comment about <coughs> the 500 foot dead end length uh, that's been raised by the planning department, by the fire and police. Um, <coughs> This isn't about unit numbers. It, it's about specific design concerns of the project. Um, now, I know the chairman said 8 to 12 units. I, I don't think you should be taking that literally. I think what he was in, implying is that that might be a, a, a density reduction that could, uh, could accommodate and, and mitigate the problems that we're, f that we're seeing with the site. It's not necessarily we're looking for a reduction of 8 to 12 units. It's just that that might be the number. I don't think I, I think what the message you should be taking back is <clears throat> address this congestion concern overall, uh, ad address the, uh, the, the, the length of this road that, that dead ends, uh, address you know, the issue with the water on the site and, and what's going to happen if, the, if those numbers were off. Um, on the cul-de-sac issue, um, I think what, what, you, what was um, conveyed to you last time was that they didn't like the stub end, they preferred a cul-de-sac end. It wasn't that they agreed with the length of the road. Um, so I think I think that's an important clarification on that. I, I think that, that there's a consensus of the board that um, having a long dead end road of this length without that secondary means of access, which you know we've been waiting for you guys to tell us if you have permission to do that, and, and at, at this point you don't. So I think the concern is that without that emergency access, the second secondary means of egress, <clears throat> that this is a very long road. Um, with respect to your concern that reducing the density would require a full redesign or re-engineering of the site. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, you know, I could, I could envision a change to this, to this plan that um, eliminates the units that are uh, furthest, where's my north arrow? So furthest to the west. Uh, if you eliminate, you know, those units back there, then you've opened up a ton of space where you could infiltrate your stormwater and septic in an area where I believe is relatively high and probably you don't have the, the gr high elevation of groundwater in that area. You create more open space, you have more elbow room to deal with uh, such issues as the, the turning radius of, of the road, which I know is raised in, in the beta report. Uh, not, it's not ideal. Uh, it passes, but it's not ideal. Uh, so I, I don't think it's a situation where you have to go back and completely redesign this project. I think there's tweaks you can make uh, that <coughs> might result in a reduction in density, but the main point here is not to reduce units. The main point is to address these concerns that, yes, it might relate to constructability, but 
Um, you, know, you, you mentioned it's, it's, preliminary, it's, it's a preliminary plan. It's constructible based upon preliminary plans. <clears throat> That's fair. I, I accept that. But I think we all need to accept the fact that all of this design work is based upon predictive modeling. It's not science. It's not exact science. It's based upon models. And models are dependent upon accurate variables that get plugged into that model. And so if those variables are off by any meaningful degree, then things don't work. And, and if you don't have alternative areas to put things, then it's, it's, not, gonna, it's not gonna work. And, and you mentioned the reserve areas for the septics. Well, your reserve areas for the septics are in the same location as the septics. So if, if that area is, doesn't work, uh, the reserve area is not gonna work. So I, I think there's an overall consensus that it's, it's a very congested site. It's not necessarily the unit density, it's just the, <clears throat> the other issues of, of congestion which um, arise when you do have a lot of, uh, a lot of infrastructure happening in, in a very small confined area. Um, you know, you get the retaining walls on property lines, you've got septic systems 10 feet from property lines, uh, you've got buildings uh, very close to property lines, five to 10 feet. Th that is a planning objection uh, that I think is reasonable and I think that's kind of the message that, we, that is intended to be conveyed to you tonight. So I, uh, appreciating all of that, I think uh, let's narrow it to two things. I, I still, in that, Attorney Hill, heard engineering concerns. Um, and I'd like to hear more from Beta, uh, the town's peer review consultant, as to what may be the engineering limitations. And I, I know one of them, groundwater mounding, comes up. And from a preliminary perspective, we wouldn't have done that yet. Uh, the other issue, and I, I think as far as this <coughs> layout, um, is that our understanding was that town safety personnel were satisfied or OK with length of cul-de-sac and the cul-de-sac design. So. Fisher, would you just speak to that one? Yeah, I, I did meet with the fire chief, and um, he actually uh, 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 endorsed this uh, uh, concept. And he says, I don't need you to do any any um, sprinkler system anymore, any fire suppression systems, nor is there any need for emergency access. So um, uh, he, he, he actually endorsed that. And that would be one of the alternatives that I've, I've seen on a, a project like this would be if there really is a concern about access, uh, you, could, you could sprinkler it. But even with this design, we vetted it with the fire department and they were satisfied. So that's called the SAC. Um, you know, and I'll... Well, that's, that's fire. That, that doesn't address well, all... Well, we have... Safety. Fire and, I mean, fire, you're right. Sprinklers don't help a kid choking on a... Right. Ambulance, right. ambulance access. Um, you know, and again... The, the alternative, when I say complete redesign, is we've chosen this particular style of unit uh, because we thought it was in, um, it, it was uh, congruent with what you would expect to see in Norfolk. But the alternative would be <coughs> duplexes or side-by-side -side townhouses to, or, or even go up to, um, you know, maintain unit count or potentially even increase unit count on a site like this where, you know, we could free up open space, but the alternative is a different housing product. Um, we do have the area on site to do on site disposal of, of wastewater. We do have the area on site and the soils on site to deal with stormwater runoff. So at, at that, to that point, I'll, I'll turn it over or I'd like to, you know, we could hear from uh, Mr. Pavlik again with Outback Engineering, who's the lead designer for the board, but I, I read through the engineering peer review from the town and it, it, it appeared as though usually what we look for from a preliminary perspective is major engineering hurdles. Is there something that says, whoa, we're way off, this is not gonna work. What I'm hearing, not necessarily from the town's peer review consultant beta, but from the town's attorney is there may be variables and we might have you know, down the line a problem. But from an engineering perspective, I haven't seen anything that says this is not gonna work or you shouldn't even go forward with it. So, I, I mean, with the, with the chair's um, consent, I, I think the next thing to do would be what does the town's engineer think about it from a constructability, you know, maybe drill into that. Um, well, I think <coughs> we can, um, back and forth on this tonight I think it'd be a mu much more productive session if we uh, 
do a workshop next week and, and get, get all these issues out. And um, go ahead, Bill. If, if I might just, and, and I did say constructability, and this is preliminary, and um, we don't see any fatal flaws in, in the, the layout or the design. Uh, the board's brought up and the, and the board's attorney have brought up certain things, and, and one of the issues we did raise, which potentially is a, a major issue, is groundwater and groundwater mounding. With the amount of septic and the amount of stormwater infiltration on the site, and I know that the response has been, um, you are going to do that, but you're going to do that as part of final design. Um, I might suggest that that is something that may affect certainly the density and the number of units you can get on here. Um, and I think that I don't want to confuse engineering constructability with, with good planning either. I think there are certainly from a planning perspective uh, some improvements that could be made. Um, and that may very well mean the loss of some units uh, to improve the layout and address some of the, the board's concerns as well. So I just, we, we did do an engineering review and I, I just want to clear up that constructability does not equate necessarily to good planning. And so I think there are some improvements that can be made. So. Yes, Bishop. Um, the, we, I, we, I recognize the importance of, of, of water mounting analysis, and believe it or not, we started that first thing. The only problem, the only reason why it's not completed, not because of, of lack of effort, but the water table is so low that uh, the, the hydrological engineer, hydrogeological engineer said, I cannot do it. The water table, he, he, we drilled, we have several wells around the site to monitor the water table. He just, on, on, on the, uh, the which uh, points, uh, <coughs> he simply cannot find water uh, on, on a lot of those uh, wells. It was, it was below 20, uh, 18, 18 feet or so, and mm -hmm. which he needs to find it in order to, because we've had a dry season. Even now, with all the rain that we've had, he still doesn't have water, water to, to run his what's called slug test. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm actually pretty astonished that people think that there's high water table there. Yes, on the bottom of the system, on the bottom of the of the site uh, near the yes, there is there is a five foot water table, but that's actually considered very very uh, favorable, uh, okay. and and it is not it, it is not uh, open to var variations as uh, Attorney Hill said because uh, that's there is science to it that determines not where the water table is but where the as you know the, where the models are where the rust line is which which is where the water lives and this is not. This is not uh, made up by us. This is this is science that was developed by the state to to to, uh, to mediate these discussions. So who's right, me or, or you? Or so they have standards that we have to comply with, and I believe if we have complied with, and if we comply comply with it, it's not really open for for interpretation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I just if I, I just want to make sure everyone understands what we're talking about when we're talking about groundwater mounding. Is the, there's a groundwater table. Um, some of the test pits exhibited either groundwater or, or modeling that would indicate that there is groundwater there. Uh, when you infiltrate into the ground, uh, there's a tendency, depending on the soils, for that groundwater to start to mound up where you're in infiltrating. And if that start that groundwater mound intercepts the the required distance between the bottom of your infiltration system and the groundwater, then, then you have an issue. Um, and on a site like this, uh, there's a lot of infiltration between septic and stormwater. So I, I think it, I, I understand your point about the, the test wells. Like I said, there was some certainly indication of groundwater in the test pits. So I, I think it's an important analysis to, to go through. Are there monitoring wells on site? You know. Have you labeled them on the plans? I, all I see is test fit locations. I don't see well locations. Yes. Are they on here? Yeah. Um, they're uh, shown on the existing conditions plan. Well, I don't have any information on, on these, but so we don't have any data for them. Before we do a test fit. I mean, if you want to, just a suggestion, if you want to give us the data from those monitoring wells, like that would, I think, help us. Well, actually, beyond that, um, 
we've already started down the road of this groundwater mounting analysis, and, and that was something that was identified by beta as, hey, you're going to need this before you go forward. <coughs> Ordinarily, we might reserve an analysis like that to final plans, but where the board really has concerns about these types of things, then we, we would be able to, to finish that groundwater mounting analysis at this preliminary stage, give more certainty to the board about this design. We, we started it eight months ago. It's not, it's not because we, we, we weren't able to do it, to, to finish it on our end, but we just simply could not read water because it was so, no water. And he needs, the, the, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm a layman, you know, like, I'm not like you uh, experts, but I was told that you have to have water to run your slug test in the, in the well, but there was no water. He said, what can I do? Uh, so he did some analysis, and he, but he's, the slug test he could not do until there is water. And even with all that rain that we had, he said there was so little water in, in the well, our monitoring wells, that you couldn't do it. So that was, that's what's holding us back, not the lack of effort. Mike, if I could make a suggestion. I, um, have you had any of these test pits witnessed by the Board of Health? Yes, sir. They were witnessed? All, all, all okay. the septics have been witnessed. I mean, it might make sense to have the Board of Health agent go out to the site maybe once to, to look at these monitoring wells and look at the readings that you're talking about and just give us a memo with your data that you're going to, if you can give us the data from these wells. And then I think that would, I think, go a long way to addressing this concern about the water levels. And okay. The last two months has been out like six or seven times. No, I, I think that's fair. I mean, if it, yeah, we'll give you this, is, this is a wet season. Last April, where a lot of your test pits were done, where it was, I think, still in the drought. No, but but this year. No, I know, but I'm, I'm talking about the test pits. But the monitoring well data would be very, very useful. Okay. We'll be glad to provide you that. Sure, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, Ray, did you want to add anything else? No, I, I think this comes down to the situation of, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a planning issue. It has to do with, you know, when you're building a building, putting a, a structure up, you get the minimum code. Um, most people don't build a house to minimum code, they build it to something much higher than the minimum code. What I'm trying to say, my point is only that we're, we're, we're stretching the limits, we're, we're trying to, to fit it all in there, and it, and it doesn't fit. It is, there's too much going on. Um, if, we, if we change the roadway so that you didn't have the roadway button up against the MBTA property at, uh, to the south, and then the housing authority property to the, to the north, um, I, I think that solves one of the problems. Um, so. I, I think you know the, the issues that we brought up tonight. Um, I think they're real issues, and I think they can be they could become issues for the future. Um, I would hate to have the neighbors flooded out because the stormwater system uh, stopped working at some point during a, a heavy rain. So that's my big concern: is that you, know, you guys may be may be building it today, but in 20 years from now, a, a neighbor might be stuck with a flooding problem that uh, they have no solution for, and and. You know, we have a homeowners association that now has to deal with that, or the town has to step in and try to fix the solution. Okay, Bill, anything else? Dan, I, I, you know, I think you have a, you know, that we're a very collaborative board. We like to, we like to see good projects built. I think it'd be very productive if we can get together next week, take the plans out. Uh, take our pens out and uh, do some markups. Give you, uh, we'll share with you some of the ideas that we have in more detail. I think that would be very productive. I, I think we can go back and forth tonight, but I think a, a workshop session would be extremely productive and, and get this uh, back on track very, very quickly. I, I would agree. Um, I think there are, are definitely some differences that need to be resolved. Um, that being said, if, if the board would like, uh, we were prepared to give a presentation on a little more detail about the look and feel of the project. Um, Tom Ryan of Ryan & Associates, it's the landscape architect, uh, is here tonight. Um, we have slides ready if, if we'd like to see uh, a little bit more about what it might look like. And I leave that up to the board. Um, what do you want to do? You want to do that at the work session or do you want to do that tonight? I think they can give a look and feel yeah. of what it's going to look like. We may have some audience members who'd like to okay. see that. All right, why don't we do that tonight then? Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Yeah, we're going to do the presentation first. Is the workshop going to be open to the public? Will that be taped? No. no. And it won't be open to the public? That'll no. be a private meeting? Yes, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. <clears throat> 
stick to in case you yeah. That's it. Is that all you know? okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the what? 27 lot. So the private meeting, who's going to guide the meeting? Who's going to guide the plan? Because I got a ton of concerns down front. Okay. I got the main road. I've got the, the entrance on the 19 property. I got the septics on my side. I've got five units up the middle. And basically, this property here would have, in town rules, would be a road in and four houses. And I don't really care about the development itself, but being impacted down front is a big deal because my house is going to be looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And 19 is going to be looking one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. That's a big deal when you're used to looking at open space and the road. Mike proponent. Sorry. Um, just, I'll repeat the comment for everybody. The, uh, the abutter at 27 was identifying the units at the uh, front of the development site near Rockwood Road. Uh, just to clarify the process, I, and I think the board's heard your concerns. I think what we heard tonight is they'd like to see those eliminated. Well, I'm more, I'm more upset about the board dumping this on you that this project has to be changed tonight, three months in. I, that's what I'm more upset about. You had the chance to look at the plan ahead of time. At before the first meeting. And the concerns are, are more with water too. Here. This woman here has flooded out. In the past, this woman here, this is the one? Yep. This woman here has flooded out in the past from snow, winter, water. Frozen ground, rain, water running in her basement windows. This is a low spot. That's a low spot. And, and just to further clarify, on, on the work session, the only reason it's We've, we've identified all of the things that the board had concerns about, and what would happen is the board would appoint one board member just to further drill down on those concerns right. um, at an informal meeting between the applicant and the board. The it, informal meeting thing but, but <laughs> is it these doesn't let everybody yeah. know what's going on. Right. Well, frankly... Um, I mean, you, s you take everything, you put it in a bucket, you throw it up on the wall, no, you come no. to town, and you say, this is our plan, and this you've got to take it, because it's 40B. You've got to take it, we're just going to wear you out. What? That's basically what it comes down to, because that's what 40B is. The state approved this already and said, yes, you can do it, and you're using state rules to come to town. And I don't have a problem with the development. I don't care if you put every unit side by side and put 50 units in there, put 100. But don't impose it on the people that are here. This woman over here is going to have, what, 225 light headlights coming into her house every day? Turning left and right, right here. When you could put the driveway right in the middle, this house is set back away from the road. This is a stone wall with bushes and flowers and crap in it. You turn left, you're not shining any headlights in anybody's yard. You turn right. You're still pretty you much far away from her. You should be talking directly to the You got problems with the MBTA coming down the hill. Right here. You've moved it here because you don't have sight line through my house. That's basically what your problem is. Right there. That's my house. Your sight line put here. You can't see down the street. And don't tell me you can. At 14 and a half feet, you don't have a chance in hell of going through that stone wall in my house. I'll leave it to the board, you know, if we want to take further public comment. But I, I think one of the things that was raised in the peer review um, was the site entrance, and that's one of the other concerns that was raised by the board tonight. I've offered so help with the site entrance. So you don't really have a site entrance, but the rest of it you have a problem with. Yep, so, you know, we'll continue to consolidate all these issues and, yeah. and figure out where we end up. That's why we um, have public hearings to... To hear what the if you want to have to uh, the landscape presentation and then maybe public comment after that, uh, if we want to hear more from Beta, because I know we had our traffic consultant here to answer questions that Beta may have, uh, because the the entrance was peer reviewed. Again, I, I think uh, we'll go forward. Mr. Ryan can do the presentation and then sure. we'll take it Why from there. Do the presentation. Absolutely. Are we going to hear from the traffic study again, Mike? That was pretty much a sham at the last meeting. 
we'll be at what uh what, what do we do with the traffic study do we have some issues to review with yes, that then we're going to go back and review yeah it. we're going to go back and look and at that prepared, too. we've got the consultant here right yeah. yeah so we can hear that yeah we can hear that yeah we're going to be doing that tonight all right yes sir go ahead okay um well this is um this is our landscape plan um and in light of everything everyone is can, where can i stand where i'm not going to block everybody <laughs> um the uh the entrance in off rockwood we have a, a wall that's been talked about that maybe we're going to have to take another look at an historic contest i was unaware of the historic nature of the of rockwood and we'll come back and look at that um and then the three units here, we have street trees along the street coming in. And then the loop here with a green that all the houses that wrap around here face on the green with a walk around the green and front porches on the inside. Um, and then the cul-de-sac back here with houses, standard houses here with garages facing front and, uh, and, and front doors here. Uh, all, the, all the homes will have uh, fenced in yards. Um, we have street trees. We have uh, a planting shown for each unit. Um, let's move to the next slide if we can. Is, is there a clicker I can use, or do you no, want to? No, there's you, not. Vanna White. Okay. Yes, okay, exactly. Great. Okay, so this is our this is our planting plan. Uh, uh, so one of the peer review comments was about species of of, uh, of trees and the spacing. Um, we have. Uh, a, uh, added a couple of, uh, of additional species in here and not use some of the ones on the list that actually now are, are suspect because of salt damage and overall global warming. Things like ash and, and sugar maple that are on the list are kind of questionable. So we've substituted a couple of other species in which, are, which are, tend to be more hardy. Uh, so things like this, the, the swamp white oak which is used at the 9-11 Memorial in New York is one that we're using here uh, and the tulip tree and uh, uh, the plane tree, uh, both of which are more, more uh, hardy than some of the things that are on, on the standard list. Um, we've also uh, uh, grouped the trees by species so that uh, we have sub-neighborhoods that are reinforced by uh, species of tree rather than alternating one, two, three. We're grouping them here, then here, then here, then there. Um, we find that most natural stands of trees have a lot of the same species together and then transition into another species area. So rather than a lot of different ones, there's, a, there's kind of a, a, a natural family relationship between the trees and aesthetically we like the looks of that coherency around the, with the uh, front porches and the same street tree all together creating kind of sub-neighborhoods within, uh, within the project. We also have um, smaller ornamental trees. Um, the, so we have some cherries and some dogwoods. Uh, we're using uh, birch trees as that ornamental thing. And that's some of these smaller trees that you'll see here. Um, so we have kind of this, this network of trees that, that works around the infiltration basins and uh, are in there to create that scale change between the houses and the street. Let's go to the next one. Um, and this is a detail of what the individual yards will look like. So uh, uh, every house has a, 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 a fenced-in uh, yard with a, a, wood, uh, a wood fence. Uh, some of the ones have a little bit bigger ones. Some have a little bit smaller. They all have patios. Uh, they'll all come with uh, <laughs> planting along the street. So we'll have porches and foundation planting along the street. And then fenced-in yards where the homeowners can add their own touches to the inside. So some of them will want, if they've got kids, they'll have a bunch of grass and probably not much else. And uh, you know, other people can you know, enhance that landscape as they go. But everyone will have the fenced in yard and uh, a patio and then planting along the front. So the streetscape from day one will look like people have been there and that'll be in and mature, but people that can take their own private space and develop it any way they want. What the next one? Uh, the peer review also asked for planting uh, details, which we provided here. So these are our standard details for trees and shrubs and plants and ground covers. Um, this is our fencing plan. Um, the peer review asked us to consider adding, adding some more board fence. And we've done that. Um, so we had a couple of gaps uh, with chain link here and here and here. <coughs> We've turned those over and made those into board fence. 
uh, to give a more continuous privacy line across uh, the property line over there and up against the MBTA. Um, so, next one. Uh, this is the front entrance that uh, you talked about, and I guess we'll be uh, reassessing. Um, but this, uh, it's you know, set back from the street um, and uh, sets up that, that gateway between the project and Rockwood. So, you know, a threshold piece. So the first unit would be back behind this wall and wouldn't be fronting on the street. But, uh, and maybe we'll be able to do that in planting and or fencing rather than wall. Uh, but we'll take another look at it with something that's more appropriate to the uh, historic district. Um, Next one. Next. Yeah. So. Yeah. So stop me if you have any questions or comments, please. The, uh, this is our lighting plan. Um, and uh, the, uh, the red dots are our street lights. Uh, the yellow ones on the garages are, are lights that will be up kind of on the street level, uh, but, but mount on the garages. And then the green ones are uh, more pedestrian scale lights uh, that we'll be using. And the idea behind the lighting is not to create a, 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 w a completely lit street, you know, so that it's, it doesn't feel urban, but we're lighting the, the critical intersections and the corners, figuring that most of these projects of, of this type, you have so many porches and you have so many lights on that if you add another layer of <coughs> continuous street lights, you can, it's kind of overpowering, particularly for the neighbors. So we're putting in what's necessary for safety uh, on the corners to try to keep the general street light level down, uh, counting on the lights in people's yards and on their porches to create that ambient light without overpowering everything. Um, there was a, a discussion about uh, uh, looking at photometrics. Um, the lights that we have are all LEDs and, and can create any pattern we want. So all the ones along the outside edge, we use a pattern that throws the light sideways and cuts it off directly on, on the neighbors. So we have the units, or the uh, lights particularly over here and over here where we can put in the light pattern that throws it out and cuts it off and pushes it sideways as opposed to out to trespass over the neighbors. Um, next one. Uh, these are the details for the lights uh, that show the, the general style and heights here. Uh, so, uh, and we have some additional lights, a couple of things where we're doing some up lighting at signage out on Rockland, um, and some, uh, uh, also some lights uh, within our community building, and there's some trellises, so there'll be some down lights in the trellises, and those are all shown here with their technical specs. Next one. Um, so these are some of the uh, lights that we're talking about using. So this is the pedestrian light. It'll be up mounted about like this. Uh, the, uh, the street lights will be out, up mounted at 14 or 16 feet, I forget which one. Uh, some down lights that will be in the trellis. Uh, some step lights. We have some, some uh, steps that go uh, from the, the green down to the uh, community building. And also we have some steps along our walkway. And they'll, we use lights like this to light our steps. Um, these are some typical unit layouts for backyards. On some of the units where we have a porch on one side and garage on the other, uh, we're, we're containing that private yard with fences front and back. On the ones that have the garages and the front porch both on the same side, then we're, then we're containing the uh, yard with, with board fence on all sides. Um, so this is kind of typical maybe of a stone wall that maybe we're going to be taking another look at uh, for the historic nature. Uh, chain link, uh, that was the idea for the stone arch within the wall. Uh, this, this is a fencing, a typical patio, and the trellis out there. Um, I think that's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, any questions? No. Um, am I correct that you can't plant trees on top of septic bleaching beds? Is that right? Yes. Uh, just looking at some of your tree locations, they seem to be in the vicinity, in the area of, of leaching beds. Uh, were you were you working with with Yes, we were. Okay. Yeah, we worked closely with Jim on that, and okay, and and we made him move some of his beds. <laughs> okay. Um, you mentioned community building. Yes. Where is that? Uh, 
I'm sorry, I didn't know what it was covered before. But we have a community building here on the edge of the green. I think it's a gazebo, it's a gazebo, gazebo. isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a gazebo. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a, uh, you know, not, not heated, but it's a, it's a gathering building uh, you know, that people can go into and use uh, uh, with two uh, trellises on either side and then a terrace behind. Okay, when I, when I picture gazebo, I'm thinking okay. it's not an enclosed building. It's a no, it's open. Okay. Yeah. Typical. Yes. Um, the fencing that you mentioned. What does that look like? What is how was the height? What is the material? Uh, it's a uh, it's a board fence. I think it was on our last. Uh, you know, it's it's a standard board fence about six feet high, and we ended up with vinyl with that. Yeah, and vinyl. Similar to what's over in 106, 108. <coughs> yeah, it's on the last one. It's kind of on the middle left there. Yeah, and like that. Oh. Yeah. And then it'll have plant, and along the street, it'll have planting in front of it to kind of reduce the, the height of it, <coughs> you know, the visual height from the street. Any other questions? Yeah, I can. Thank you very much. It was a good presentation. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. I, I just quickly to follow up, I, I think Tom's presentation highlighted the uh, design concept uh, of this single family with a, a small outdoor private space that's secluded and that uh, each single family home would have. That was uh, the design concept that the developer's proposing. And I think what the developer had indicated in talking about um, a redesign would be for this particular product, which we think is a unique product and we think it, it, it um, makes sense for this lot, the site layout uh, is driven by that. They're tied together. So if we were to go in a different direction, then the building typology might change. We might be looking at side-by-side uh, -side townhouses, uh, potentially, uh, you know, like I said, going up. But we think that this is a, a unique product that's appropriate for this village setting. And um, that's what's driving the site design and, and the layout. So they go hand in hand. Thank you. You might have had an audience question. Is there a hand in the back? Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Henry, 30 Boardman Street. So the, uh, my question is regarding the fencing that, that surrounds each individual home. Uh, is that like the association responsible for that, or is each individual homeowner responsible for the fencing? I think that's association. Yes, association. So the exterior ones as well as the ones that are around the individual homes? Yes. Okay. Uh, the proposed stone that may or may not change in the front wall there, uh, would that be like a cultured product, or would that be an actual stone product? Well, that's natural. That's natural. It, it's been by voice crossing. I have, I have not. It's, it, it's okay. And typically, there's a requirement uh, in regular uh, traditional zoning that if you're within 50 feet of a residence, uh, that there would be some sort of uh, planting, screening done, trees, that sort of thing. Uh, is the fencing done in exchange for that or in place of that, or would there be any kind of screen planting done as well? Uh, it would be in place of that. Okay. Um, there's the, the one home on Rockwood on the uphill side, you know, right as you're looking, already has kind of a there right at the property line and the stone wall. So it, it'd be a similar treatment to that kind of for the rest of the Okay, thank you. Hi, Al Quaglary, 194 Main Street. Uh, a question for Tom. How many lights are in this project when you add them all up? Houses, street, steps. <laughs> Hundred, two hundred. Um, well, this, this uh, I don't know. Um, this is about two final plans. Yeah, the final plan. 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 There's um, around a hundred. Yeah. So if there's you now, there's going to be a porch light for every. You know, every house is required to have a light by their front door. So everybody's house. I think we could do
Fair to say? So that's what uh, I think Tom was saying. Of, oh, sorry, Owen Kelly, uh, the developer. Uh, I think that's what Tom was saying. We, the goal of the lighting um, for the street lights is to uh, not make the whole thing overpowering, but instead just fill in the gaps along the road. I, I beg to differ. When you're driving up Main Street, and this is a clear view right into that, it's going to look like a city, you know full lights and uh, you know, very disruptive to the neighbors. And my second point, seeing as you brought up global warming, and I'm going to use Beta's analogy, hey, well, how do you think clear cutting uh, seven acres affects global warming in your professional opinion? Global warming. I was just using uh, you know, some of Tom's terms on yeah, his. Uh, yeah. Thing as many yeah, as you're taking down. As many trees as you're cutting down. <laughs> Sounds like a rhetorical <laughs> question, Mr. Chair. I was before. Yeah. Yeah. Mike. I think if they told me to tell about 40 yeah. trees. Uh, and then. Get a little mud slightly. I have one more question, Mike. <laughs> one more question, and that's it. All right. Can we go to the existing condition plan? Was. Is that on the uh, site plan? No, on the landscape one. On the site plan? Yeah. So, it, the, the attorney for uh, the applicant spoke about the density. So. And, you know, you're sort, of, you're sort of carrying on like this is some normal, uh, how many acre parcel is it? Is it five, seven, eight? But if you look at the parcel, this is not a normal parcel. And you're trying to jam, you have an opening it's like a hammer and a sickle at the end with a, a small opening to the rear. So when you, when you talk about density, I don't think it's fair for you to use state you know, specs on density like this is a rectangular or a square lot. <coughs> you're, you're, you're jamming this thing right down that throat. And that throat is that small opening that brings to the rear. So you know the density issue, I, I don't think it's fair that you're, you're citing those kind of numbers. OK. I had one other question regarding the, uh, you had said that you had dealt with uh, the drainage issue and dealing with it on site versus before where it showed it running off into the town. Um, is that based on a 10 year, 20 year, 100 year event? Um, <coughs> and, and, uh, and is all of that water being kept on site or is some of it being uh, taken off site? Jimmy, you going to answer that? <laughs> the the uh, drainage pipes were designed for a 100 year storm. Um, and we looked at a comparison of pre-development versus post-development flows off-site, and we've got a reduction um, at, the, uh, at the site boundary. Mr. Chair, you might want to consider hearing from the applicant on the changes they've made on the site drainage, because there were some, I think, some material changes in response to Beta's comments, and maybe you could hear from Beta on the changes as well. You want to address that, Jim? The comments from Beta? Your changes to the plan. Your changes. The improvements that you've made to the plan from the last Okay, you want to just hear the general changes yes. that we made? Sure. Uh, if we could go to <coughs> sheet three, maybe. Um, right, so there were two primary changes that we dealt with on this. There was the concern about the roadway that was we were proposing to tie in as an emergency access out to uh, Boardman Street. Um, so we took a look at rearranging this cul-de-sac. And previously, this roadway had continued. Um, let me see. We had continued it uh, out to this parcel. So we reconfigured it to fit in a cul-de-sac that meets the town standard dimensions. And in doing this, we selected different home styles that better reflected um, the layout that we're showing here. So it was a, it was a change in um, the type of unit style there. 
Uh, one of the other comments we had heard about was previously there was a sidewalk that had wound through the back of units one through three and out to Rockwood Road. And there was a, su a suggestion that we provide a sidewalk along the main entry road out to Rockwood. So again, we, we selected different home styles there and we're uh, proposing a sidewalk along that main entrance. Uh, and one of the other concerns was a not there should be a crosswalk across Rockwood to connect to the existing sidewalk on the opposite side of the road. Um, and we did a detailed survey along this portion of Rockwood uh, out to the um, railroad. And what we're hatching in red would be a proposed sidewalk that could be built along the, uh, the same side as the site entrance. So we'd have a continuous sidewalk that would connect to the T's existing sidewalk. Um, so in terms of the site design, I think those were two of the primary changes. And regarding the drainage, previously uh, at the end of the cul-de-sac, we were proposing to tie into the town's drain pipe that exists in the uh, Medway branch, I guess it's being referred to as. So we had a, a direct pipe connection there, and we were proposing another one over here. And with the revised layout, we're, we're proposing underground leaching beds at all locations that would, so that there's no direct pipe discharge to the town's drainage system. And we did a, a, um, a significant amount, uh, a number of additional test pits on site since the last meeting. Uh, many of them were witnessed by the Board of Health agent, and so we furthered along the septic design and incorporated that additional soil testing into the, the overall drainage design that we came up with. So, that, that showed on the plans too, right? The test data? Yes, the new test pits and soil logs are all shown on the plans. So, those were the primary changes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. One question, please. Sure, um, Mr. Chipman. Peter Chipman, 201 Main Street. Uh, I totally support this project. It's something that we've been working towards for the last 10 plus years, going back to the early days of the Downtown Development Committee. Um, bringing up things like smart road development, which are standards that are set in the state for one, eight units per acre, uh, 12 units or duplexes and 20 units per multifamily, we could end up with a very different product. However, given the challenge of the site that coming <coughs> out in the normal process, I don't understand why the proponent's attorney keeps saying, well, you're going to come up with a different product. It, has the developer been told to do single family units? Because we have successfully put up some great products in this town that are duplexes that are fourplexes, fiveplexes, and sixplexes. And they've come out nice, and they look great. They'd probably create a lot more open space and save a few trees in the, in the meantime. You know, this, you know, separate and apart from some engineering and traffic issues, which is just a normal progress of any, any, any development, I just wish that you would look into those alternatives rather than kill as I joked with Jim Pavlik, who actually represented me on a project a while back, uh, of getting the boots on the ground in the downtown. Because I think that's where we shouldn't lose sight of, but maybe look at it differently. And again, I wish this team all the luck in their progress going forward. Thank you. OK, I think we've exhausted uh, comments. Yeah. Are, are we done with the public comment? I thought we were waiting to hear from Beta before we were doing public comments. Uh, do you have a question? Well, um, they're not related to landscaping. Um, so I've just been sort of keeping track. Um, Martha Henry, 30 Boardman Street. Uh, it, I'm curious how the workshop works. So I respect that it would be very messy, probably to have a lot of public voices in that. Um, but it would be helpful to understand what that process looks like, what the outcome looks like who's driving that, um, who's facilitating that, is there an independent facilitator or mediator for that? 
Um, and then I feel like I hear conflicting messages, and, and maybe you do too, that we don't want, we don't want you to use Boardman Street. Oh, we want you to use Boardman Street. And my worry is you're going to go into your workshop and we're going to come out with something completely different and then we're going to start again in these public hearings starting with yet another design. And maybe that's the process and I just am not familiar with that. So I want to understand what are the engineering requirements of using Medway Branch ex Extension? Has anybody tested that? Is that wide enough? Um, it is not a very wide path. You know, a septic system truck goes down there to get to Hillcrest Village, and it's a little bit wider than that. That abuts my property. <coughs> so how close to my property can you get if you're going to build a paved road? Is that even a an engineering possibility to use that as a full-fledged emergency access? How wide is that? There's a... a I guess like a leaching field for Hillside Village right there. Can you pave over that? Can you cut into that? Can you develop that land? I want to know the reality of the town's position on that and then the reality of that being a real possibility for this particular project. And then I've had the same concern about the water and I think Mr. Goff hit the nail right on the head. What happens in five years? 10 years. We already have a water problem on our site. We're pumping water off that site into our front yard all the time whenever there's a big storm. So what happens to the abutters when the numbers are off, when the modeling is wrong? And, and what happens to groundwater, and I'm not an engineer, when you push 32 houses into the ground? when you put leaching fields into the ground, when you put concrete into the ground, what does that really do to those original groundwater testing? So it's a bit of an education. I don't know those answers, but those are my real concerns that this is a private for-profit product project that they're going to go on and move to their next project <coughs> and either those homeowners or the town is going to be left with what is it called poor planning, poor engineering, whatever it might be. So I know I just threw a lot at you, but I'll stop talking now. Okay, thank you. Um, Mike, well, I have one question. But, uh, uh, it's, been, it's been common practice in, in this town to read seasonal high groundwater. The last week of March and the last week of April, this has gone on for over 20 years. I don't know if it's just this town, but it seems to me like every town I do work in, and that's six or seven in this area, that's common practice. And it seems to me that the engineers didn't do any groundwater readings in the seasonal high groundwater pumps. And now they want to go out in May, in June, and, and start looking at groundwater in the wells. They should have been doing that in March and April. I think they did in April. If, if you look at the plans, I think there's a bunch of readings that were in April of 2017. I, they can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe it was. And I didn't hear that, so okay. 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 Um, Dan, do you want to take a stab at some of the uh, questions about the workshop? And uh, that's standard operating procedure for 40B boards. Yeah, it varies. Uh, some CBA boards. boards and 40B projects across the state. Do you yep. want to address that since you deal with sure. a number of communities and you can speak on behalf not, a, not only for our board but for the boards you've represented as well, other boards? Sure. So I, I think to allay some of the concerns we're hearing from, from the public is no decisions are being made in these workshops and and the board all understands that they have to be very careful not to violate the open meeting law as well as the public hearing requirements of chapter 40b um so they can't make decisions at these workshops it's mo mo it's it's intended to be a collaborative process and the, and the chapter 40b is supposed to be a collaborative process between the applicant and the town uh because to be frank the deck is always stacked against the town right. on 40b so it's actually good for a town to work collaboratively with a developer when the developer is willing to do so. So these meetings are really just intended to be informal discussions about improvements that can be made. And um, I think this board fully understands and, and knows the limitations of that. So they'll report back, I, I, I'm assuming, they'll report back to everybody, the rest of the board, 
at the next hearing after the workshop to explain what happened at the workshop and, and what proposals were, were raised. And it'll be up to the full board to decide whether or not to accept you know, those changes or recommendations. So it wouldn't, just, it wouldn't be the full board. The board would appoint one member. One member. <coughs> the, the town administrator or the town planner would, would likely attend any other town officials or whatever the town decides. Would there be one person from the public attend this workshop? That's not the way we do it, no. I'm asking if you can change it to do it that way. Is it no. that your call, Mike? Uh, I, what's that? Is it that your call? Yeah, I have no intention of changing that procedure. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think, I think maybe there's a, an air of, you know, there's backroom deals. We heard it in the first meeting. These workshops are not backroom deals. These workshops, as Dan mentioned, that to try to look at the project, take some of these ideas that are presented at the public hearing, and try to work through them. Try to work through, should eight units be removed? Should you know units be moved on the property? It's to work through some of those issues. If some of the issues in the front of the build, uh, front of the site can be pulled back. It again, there is no decisions. There is no backroom deals. We're not going to change. Right now, if you look at the development, there is no access to Medway Branch. They have a cul-de-sac. I know, but there is no access to Medway Brand. There will be no change. There will be no change at a workshop to the current plan. There will be looking at the current plan to decide where, how it's. How, I'm not yelling, but you're talking over me. It's just the air that the public should be there because you're concerned that there's a backroom deal going on. There is not because nothing can be decided there. Anything talked about at that workshop is to be presented back to the public hearing and then to be re-looked at. What we're trying to avoid, and I think everybody can appreciate it, is everybody agrees we should have this type of development in town. Everybody agrees to that. Absolutely. The question is how dense and how it gets laid out. We want to make sure that we don't send a developer redesigning this product, spending an awful lot of money. Look at the number of men. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. I know they that. don't I know that. they don't do it for free. So we don't want them spending a fortune redesigning something if in a workshop we can look at some of that stuff, provide some ideas, they can provide some feedback and then they can come back to the public hearing and present that without a lot of a lot of back and forth, back and forth. Look how many hours we've been here. We've been here almost 2 hours. Well, and again, we want to do this but you got to look at the process. It is not a backroom deal. There is I nothing that gets discussed. I wasn't implying it was a backroom deal. There is nothing that gets discussed in that workshop. It won't implying. be presented to the public again. So to have the public there, it gets to be as, you know, back and forth, back and forth. That's not the idea behind that. The idea behind that is to look at some of the ideas and try to look at the plan as a whole so we can give guidance to the developer. And so he can present a better product to I us. That. I can appreciate that. So I, I, just, I, just, I get the air of this backroom deal. The public should be there. It doesn't work that way, and it, does, it shouldn't work that way. This is a workshop. To, it was strictly to streamline information to people that are concerned. No more. No more than that. There was no implication of a backroom deal for me. I just want that on the record. I, I also think we've sent some mixed messages to the builder yes. uh, directly. Exactly. I mean, that, that, you know, he's been told, I mean, the selectmen are on record saying that they are not in favor of that. And then the chairman, Mike Palooza, says he is in favor of that. So of no, I never said that. I, I never said that. I want to correct the record. I never said that. I said that. I thought the, you said you were in favor of the Boydman Street for emergency access. Oh, I, I didn't say the selectmen were. I said I personally am in favor of that. That's, like, yeah. that's what I'm saying, that that's a bit of a mixed message when you say, hey, here's a road you should go down. And the selectmen, who I believe are in charge of that road, that's right. That's exactly what I said. The are selectmen on are in charge saying of that. that they, are they make that, that decision, and and so I'm publicly saying I would like to see that used as I'm an emergency exit. That that's a mixed message that yeah. we're sending to the builder. Well, well let's let's be clear about that though. I mean, it's, it's not mixed. the zoning board is the permitting authority, so there there are often disagreements between boards and towns <laughs> about what should be done and what shouldn't be done. Absolutely. This isn't the only town that has that kind of politics. Absolutely. So, but then, isn't well, the question really site control? For, for the access, absolutely. I mean, you you have to get permission from the town to do it, and right now they don't have it. Maybe they will in the future. Who knows? But that's and, and if you don't, and that's why there's a board because you all have opinions and views. Yeah, and exactly. I'm just we're just stating what our views and what our opinions are, and selectmen may uh, shut us down. I, I I don't know, 
I'm just saying what we, we as a board feel and think. So just to get back on track, could, could I ask a couple questions about the drainage sure. while we're sure. on Go the ahead. topic? Let's so, wrap that up. Um, I, I was reading through the beta comment letter, and um, I, I was a little concerned about the comment about there was no out, outlets. Outlets? Outfalls? Outlets, right? <laughs> Emergency yeah, outlets, emergency overflows. so overflows. So that's in the case. So th their their modeling shows that the hundred year storm can be handled on site. Yes, and, and just to correct, there are some systems that have emergency <coughs> overflows. There were two or three that did not, and that's where we raised the concern. And the concern is again the the analysis that we've looked at and the peer review shows that the hundred year storm can essentially be contained on site. It won't go through the overflow. The overflow is there in the event uh, that was raised that something happens in the system and it can't handle all that. Um, and that certainly goes to maintenance of the system. Uh, so there were a couple, there were two or three systems that, that didn't have overflows that we raised concerns about. And so there are, uh, seems to be about a dozen of these infiltration chambers that are being proposed on site. Um, can can you just uh, describe briefly what these look like? Are these con are these like precast concrete tanks essentially with perforated holes or what what what? what? I I can describe. I'd, I'd rather let the the applicant's engineer describe. Them. We actually have a detail. Um, yes, here. So this is a cross section through what one of the leaching beds would look like. Uh, but there are these uh, plastic chambers that are designed for use under uh, <coughs> roadways, driveways, parking lots, etc. And so they're interconnected plastic chambers surrounded by crushed stone. Um, where does the water get in and where does it go out? So we would have catch basins at certain locations uh, along the roadways. So the, just the, so the, wa the water goes into the chambers themselves and then leaches out of those chambers into the stone. Right, so we have catch basins first. Um, and then they would be piped into these. Can okay, you show me where the pipe goes into the, into the plastic? Yeah, so there's these I holes. View from the top. Yeah. Oh, you want the plan I mean, view? Well, I think that he's looking for the I'm having a hard time visualizing. Huh? Okay. Well, that, that's cross section. If yeah. we can go to, um, it, might be on it might be sheet four or five. We have a right. simpler right. utility layout right. sheet. Okay. This is the, uh, here we go. Oh, back one. Back right there. Um, so this was um, just a simpler layout showing the uh, roadways and drainage areas and other utility lines. Um, but for instance, uh, we have Rockwood Road here, and then we come into the entrance. There's a set of catch basins at a low point here that are with a water quality tank, and that's then piped into an underground leaching bed there. And there's other locations along the the roadway where we have catch basins and these tanks to these underground chambers. All right, so, so you got a leaching bed. The water then infiltrates from the bottom of the bed into the ground? Yes. And what does the bottom of this of the structure look like? Is it, is it? It's open. The, the plastic open? chambers are open and they lay, they sit on top of the, uh, a layer of crushed stone. Okay, because I've seen other infiltration chambers that are not open, that are concrete with, with holes in them. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is. No. Um, gasoline separation or oil separation for these? Yes. Well? So we have catch basin and water quality tanks. So they're designed to separate the floatable uh, gasoline and uh, sediment would settle out. And who's in charge of the maintenance of those? Is that the association as well? Homeowners Association would be. And is that would be handled with the Board of Health like as far as the maintenance of when that is being done? Typically there's a uh, homeowners association document uh, that specifies um, uh, that the homeowners have to pay into a, a fund <coughs> and we have a detailed operation and maintenance plan that's required that we put together. Right, part of the overall budget, the association fees pay for it. Do you know if that's done annually, semi-annually? It's, it's an annual budget that uh, usually is paid monthly by individual. No, I, I meant the actual physical maintenance of them. Of oh, the I don't separated. know, that would be up to the plan that they, they come up with an operation an operation plan, a maintenance plan, so whatever plan comes up with. This, this site is somewhat unique in that there's no wetlands on site or in the surrounding area. 
Um, it's all upland soil and uh, fairly permeable soils that we identified everywhere. Um, so I know there's the, the talk about, you know, whether or not we have overflows and so on, but currently the site is set up so that there's existing low points on site. Um, there's a couple areas at the front of the site and um, the runoff from the site is such that it sheds, the high point of the site is pretty much in this area. It's running off to the back of the property into the town's existing drainage area um, towards the southeast here and then uh, towards the front towards a couple of existing low points. So there's not a, a lot of areas where it currently discharges off site. There's, there's just no, you know, typically on a larger site we might have a wetland or a receiving stream um, that we could put an overflow pipe out, out to and have a discharge point, but there's no such area like that on the site here. Um, Jim, so I have a couple other questions. Limited in that regard. If I could just get through my questions and then. Sure. Um, so over time, uh, will trash and, 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 and sediment get into the bottom of these basins, say like in five years? Is that, is that something that will occur with this design? And if, if so, is that something that can be cleaned out? Is there, is, is there like ports or something that you can get in there and clean these things out? Yes. So that's the purpose of these catch basins and the water quality tank. Getting out uh, the larger trash. Uh, the finer sediment, um, and uh, so by the time the water gets into these things, it'll be water. It won't be it's fairly clean junk. water, right? Do you agree with that? It, yeah, and, and that's standard practice, and that's part of the uh, state's stormwater management policy. Uh, they're in a way very similar to a septic system, where you have a septic tank. In this case, you have a water quality unit um, that removes the the solids, removes any floatables, removes the sediment. The most important thing with these is, is maintenance o over time. If you don't maintain the water quality unit, then yes, you could get sediment in, into the infiltration chambers. So maintenance is, is critical. That basin down, the, can I, down can by I the just house? Can I just finish my questions and then? Yeah, yeah, can okay. you, if, you wanna, if you have a question, you, please raise your hand and I'll identify you because we can't just have this random question going on. If you have a question, please raise your hand and I will identify you. Thank you. All right. Um, Beta made a suggestion actually that uh, they, they disagreed with your exfiltration rate for a couple of the basins and suggested you use a, a lower rate. Is that, are you agreeing with that comment and will you be? We didn't have a chance to formally respond to that, but <coughs> I looked at those comments in particular and, and what uh, I believe they were identifying is that um, in this area, uh, the site is sloping like this. So we're cutting the bed into um, the natural soils on one end and filling on the other end. So what we're going to have to do, it's another detail we'll add to the final plans, but we're going to be removing that subsoil and essentially replacing it with clean um, permeable sand, so we would still be using the higher infiltration rate. Okay. And then what about the pre-development condition? Did, did you have an assumed infiltration rate for the soils, for the stormwater standards? Uh, are you referring to the basin? Uh, no, it's your site. I, just to clarify, I think, I think that's part of the, it's not a specific infiltration rate, it's part of the curve number that's used uh, in the hydraulic cal or hydrologic calculations. Um, and that's something that was adjusted. Uh, we had had a comment initially about the curve number for existing conditions, okay. which takes into account vegetative cover, land use, think soil types, um, which was adjusted based on the findings of the test pits. So. Okay, so you're, you're in agreement with the pre-development assumptions? Okay. okay. That's all I had for stormwater. Okay, Chairman. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Paul Custom. Um, just a quick comment. I think the board I think the board realizes um, the status of the plans. I mean the plans eventually will have to be totally completed final set of plans still subject to peer review. So right now the plans are way beyond the preliminary stage. There's been an awful lot of detail. Better has, has taken a look at that made some comments. We're basically, I think, in agreement that we can satisfy all of those comments and all of that detail engineering, even though the questions are very uh, 
helpful now, all of that will be addressed in the final set of plans that Jim will prepare and still be reviewed by your uh, peer review to be sure that the neighbors are satisfied, that you're satisfied, that the two engineers are satisfied that the drainage, you know, has to be contained on site and we have to comply with all of the rules, regulations, and laws. <coughs> Thank you. I would just, uh, since we have um, the traffic experts here tonight, there were a, a few, and, and what I try to focus on are what are the real engineering hurdles, but there were a few items pointed out by Beta about the site entrance, so I think it would be helpful to at least uh, identify those issues for the public based on this design, because um, it was also raised by the board as one of the concerns they had uh, indicated regarding this site layout. So w would the chair care to hear from sure. Beta's traffic engineer? Yes, let's do I that. I have a question on drainage still. Yes, go ahead. I raised my hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, that drainage basin down by the street that abuts that house, has anybody done a comparative analysis on the elevation to that drainage in the basement of that house? It doesn't seem like that drainage basin has an outlet, and that house could flood out if that drainage is at a higher elevation than the basement of that house. That was one question. The second question is, and it's for beta. When we design septic systems and you have a, a perk rate of say eight minutes an inch, you're not allowed to put septic sand in and then call the design rate two minutes an inch. But it, it seems to me like that's what they're doing on their drainage calcs. Do I have that wrong? Well, I think they're there's- using a more aggressive replacement sand instead of the original soil? Well, I think there's, there's two different issues. One is Title V and septic systems, which you're right, is, is natural soil. Uh, the stormwater as well as natural soils and groundwater. There is some more flexibility in the stormwater requirements in terms of um, adding in additional soil. I don't, I don't think they've been uh, overly liberal in the, the rates that they're using. And did you have time to do a pre and post analysis and you agree with their pre and post? We've reviewed their pre and post analysis and we have some comments that that don't affect the overall design but may affect some details of it. Thank you. Traffic. All right, so um sir. Just if ahead, if Bill. I may just preface it a little bit. Go ahead, Bill. Um so uh we did our initial peer review of traffic which was presented at the the last meeting, um, the developer's traffic engineer responded to, to those comments. We had an opportunity um, a couple of days ago to talk with the developer's traffic engineer and try to work through some of the things that we still had some differences on, okay. um, ask for some additional information, which I think was submitted this afternoon. We haven't had a chance to look at that. Um, but I think that the site entrance still is a, an issue that we need to to address. Okay. Good evening. Jason Plord with Beta Group. Um, you know, as Bill was saying, you know, we, we've had some coordination efforts <coughs> with the applicant's traffic engineer really to kind of clarify what we're looking for because their comment letter back to us kind of seemed a little like they didn't understand what we were asking for. So we want to clarify that and as a result um, of the 15 comments that we had, seven of them have <coughs> so we're, we're still looking at um some additional information to be provided um you know it's it's a matter of uh may 22nd yes okay. so the uh as um, we remember at the last meeting we were talking about the 2014 traffic counts that were collected at the roundabout, and are they valid or are they <coughs> not valid? Um, so what they're, what they're gonna do is, uh, it was just a quick kind of a comparison of their traffic volumes that they showed within the traffic study on figures two and three, and there was an imbalance along Rockwood Road between Ware Drive and the roundabout. Now there are curb cuts out there in between that area, a parking lot for the T station, things like that. So we just asked Green International to go out there and just try to justify that imbalance because it, it was about 75 to 100 vehicles per hour that were kind of off in each direction. 
So um, they're, they're taking a look at that to provide support um, for that imbalance. They're also going to be reaching out to the uh, MAPC <coughs> to find out if the Regional Planning Commission has any traffic counts in the area on a Saturday. Because what we want to do is we want to find out, is it critical, is it not? We just don't know. You know, the town doesn't have any traffic volumes out here on a Saturday, so this comment is kind of still hanging out there. Um, the, the September traffic volumes, we looked at all the different count stations around. Uh, they've all come out to be generally higher than the average month conditions, so we got no problem with their adjustment to uh, average month conditions. They're going to be uh, conducting some speed runs along Rockwood Road adjacent to the site. Uh, as, as they had discussed at the previous meeting, they had collected uh, some traffic volumes and speed data observations further to the north of the driveway. Um, those speeds seem to be higher than what the applicant's traffic engineer considered would be closer to the site. Um, so we just asked them to show us that information. Why is that important? It's important because speeds come into play with site distances. So if they want to use a lower speed to be able to require less site distance, we want to know what speeds they're actually going to be using. So they're going to be going out there and, and conducting some, uh, some trial runs uh, to be able to find out how fast people are driving both northbound and southbound on Rock Rockwood Road adjacent to the site. They're uh, working with the town to be able to see what kind of safety improvements can be implemented at the roundabout. We've got no problem with that. Um, they need to coordinate with the town planner to find out if their growth rate is adequate. Not that we think that it's wrong, but we just want them to make sure that uh, they check in with the town on that. Um, their background development that they used within the project, we, we have no problem with that as they were projecting out their future traffic volume conditions. Uh, their transit trip credit, um, different sources are available to be able to provide what, you know, how people are getting around within the town, um, whether they're going to work, uh, where they're living, things like that. We understand that the T station down the street is uh, a big draw, especially for this development and pedestrians. I saw on one of the plans here tonight that uh, the applicant is proposing to construct the sidewalk along Rockwood Road down to Ware Drive. That was one of our comments, and, and that's great. We want that. Uh, we need that pedestrian connectivity out there. The sight line plan. So in Green International's uh, response letter that they provided to us, dated May 11th, they provided some plans in the back. The sight line uh, profile plan needs to be adjusted because it, it's done incorrectly. Um, Was that filed with the board? I don't think I saw that. The, the Green International response? I, I think that. <coughs> you should have a copy of it in your pen. Oh, it's in there? Okay. Yeah, so there should be 11 by 17s or maybe even reduced versions in the back there. But ultimately what it's showing is it's based on, you know, the higher speeds that they don't want to use. So these sight lines are going to be adjusted, most likely, um, going through a retaining wall, going through a budding property, and it's measured, uh, I don't know if you remember <coughs> not, at the last meeting, explain what the difference between stopping sight distance is versus intersection sight distance. So the stopping sight distance is when you're on the road and you're looking at the driveway and you need to stop in time before hitting someone. Pulling out of the driveway, for example. Intersection sight distance is when you're a stopped vehicle getting out of the driveway, looking to your left and looking to your right to see oncoming cars. The difference between the two is the height requirements that they're measured to and from. The stopping sight distance, when you're a car, you have three and a half feet off the road, driver's eye height, to be able to see a two-foot object. So that's the tail light of a, of a vehicle that may be uh, pulling out. Intersection sight distance is when you need to see driver eye to driver eye. So that's three and a half feet to three and a half feet. They measured three and a half feet to two feet. So it was almost like that the the two terminologies were confused in mix match. So I asked Green International to get involved to help the site engineer uh, revise the site line profile plan and it will likely change anyway based on Green International's speed study that they do out there. 
because, again, how far you need to see is really contingent upon how fast people are traveling on the roadway, on the main line, that is, not on the minor street approach. Uh, they agreed that uh, they're not going to have any planting signs, vegetation, uh, to be able to obstruct the sight lines. Rockwood Road at uh, Boardman Street. Now that intersection there, um, we talked about it. it. There's already some delays out there as you're trying to come out of Boardman going eastbound. It's a single lane approach, so it doesn't matter if you're <coughs> turning left going through or turning right. If you have a car in front of you that's stopped turning left, it doesn't matter if you're trying to turn right, you're still stuck. So they're adding cars, obviously, to the right turns coming out of Boardman going southbound on Rockwood. They're adding traffic on uh, Rockwood going northbound and southbound. So uh, what we asked them to do was to take a look at what kind of potential improvements could be done out there. Not that they are the ones that need to commit to implementing the improvements, but to help the town in finding out what can be done out here. Um, in their response, they identified that at times um, that intersection is under police officer control and there has been some discussion of signalization. So what I asked them to do was to conduct a traffic signal warrant analysis just to find out is a traffic signal warranted at that location. I think that that would definitely help out the town know if, if you should put in a signal or kind of look at d different alternatives to be able to improve the traffic flow. They provided us with the, uh, the traffic counts that were missing from the appendix of the traffic study. Um, and it's even missing on the version that's online, too, on the town's website. Uh, but we looked at that. We have some concerns with the different values that they used. Um, but ultimately, it's not going to make any difference in the overall operations of the roundabout as compared to what they presented. Uh, if they do use these traffic volumes and the traffic counts in the future, we just want them to kind of be aware of the peak hour factors that they used um, and the omission of the, uh, the trucks during the weekday morning. But again, it's not really going to change the impacts of the intersection because you already have some pretty good uh, operating levels of service, A, Bs, and Cs. It's not like it's going to drop to an F or anything like that with their development or with these modifications. Um, we asked that, uh, we, we agreed with Green to continue their discussions with the town <coughs> regarding their off-site improvements. And then the last comment um, was not in our original comment letter because it was based on the plans that they provided in their response. Um, I did not really focus in on the on-site circulation, but it was for the truck turns turning right in off of Rockwood Road into the site driveway and right out onto Rockwood Road going southbound. Um, as shown on their plans, they crossed the double yellow center line. We wanted them to kind of take another look at it to see if they can revise the truck turning paths and work with the site engineer to possibly modify the curb radii on the driveway on both the north and south corners along uh, Rockwood Road because that may help to minimize the, uh, the actual amount of room that they're crossing into oncoming traffic. Can I ask a question about that point? Sure. While we're on it. Yeah, does, does their curb radii comply with the planning board's subdivision rules and regs for streets? I don't know. Is that, I would we'll think, I mean that if it does comply, I guess it begs the question, <laughs> is that a problem everywhere in town? Or if it doesn't comply, then that might be a waiver that we might be thinking about in terms of... So, so here's the thing, is that based on state guidelines, <coughs> they show that when you have um, going from a local road to a local road, so let, let's say that you know, the driveway is accepted by the town and it becomes a public roadway. Trucks are shown to be acceptable on occasion to be able to cross the double yellow center line turning right out from the minor street approach onto the main line. That does not mean that you, you can allow that all the time. You, that doesn't, you know, like every, ex, every single intersection. That means it's okay, it's not preferred. Take another look at it to see if there's something that you can do to minimize that or alleviate it altogether. <coughs> so that's why I'm saying that in all cases that are within the town today, it may be acceptable, but for new developments, if there's a way to minimize that, that would be the preferred way. What about if it's a private road? Because this will not be a town road. 
Does so, the state have a standard for that? So the state does not have information for private roads or for driveways, but in general terms, they look at that as the same as local road to local road. It, it, just to clarify, it's, it's more of a concern with trucks turning onto Rockwood Road and crossing the center line, less a concern of what happens on the site driveway. Right. So. Exactly. You know, if they cross into the, if they use the whole driveway width when they're turning in, you know, that, that, that's okay. It's really what's happening to the traveling public along Rockwood. If, if I can just add one more thing, because site distance is, is su such an important aspect of the, uh, the driveway. One thing we want to make sure of, um, that site distance triangle, that area that they need to be able to see, we want to make sure that the developer has control of that whole area so that he can maintain it clear. If it goes onto an adjacent property, it becomes an issue that the developer may not have control over what happens on that property that could block site distance. So, so that's why it's important that we, we clarify the site distance and we, we see it on a plan so we, that we know the developer has control over being able to main that, maintain that site triangle. Keep the triangle on the development. Right. know when this will be available this is a obviously a huge piece of the the puzzle knowing what this because with the driveway very close to the house on the on the left side right. and I think right. that individual has a fence or a fence and a, a vine growing up on it I don't see much of a sight line and going to the right where the road takes a dramatic curve it, this is I think a, we need to have these numbers sooner rather than later yeah. to, to start to make some decisions with regard to this do we uh, know what the plan is for that uh, absolutely and i obviously know you got to they got to do some speed studies and yeah. but we need I, to know this I mean, answer yeah. and i i would um, reiterate that i agree um, we received additional comments regarding traffic particularly with with regard to the sight lines on monday um, Green International had done some additional work is going to do uh, additional speed testing we also have the letter from the police chief um, that also identified the site driveway as a concern. And, and given some of the comments that we got from the board at the outset, um, you know, we really do want to put together a comprehensive package on that. We're going to show the, uh, correct heights, site stopping dis or uh, intersection site distance and stopping distance and confirm all of those. So we'll continue to check those off the list. I, I think um, clearly that's something that uh, is of concern. So we want to be able to put on a comprehensive uh, response to that. And, and you're right, sooner rather than later, so. I'll ask the... I'll I know, ask I the think there were some additional things, so I think we'll defer it for tonight, and then... Uh, no, I think we'll hold off for tonight, and then, because there were a lot of, uh, there were a couple moving pieces to it, so we want to make sure, and we heard some additional information from uh, one of the neighbors as well uh, regarding that orientation, so. Can I ask the... Can I, I'll ask uh, you're Bill preparing the million dollar question. Sorry. Preparing a written response? Okay, just on the site entrance? On a lot of the items that were See, I, I, just, I think th we want to get a, in a written response uh, before we do a presentation. So let's just hold off on a, on a presentation for tonight. And I think uh, you know, we're kind of running out of time as well. But um, what, what would, uh, you I'm know. correct, the driveway may, it may move, right? It may be, this thing may move from the edge of the property that's not now, right? We don't know yet. Uh, but uh, that, that's part of the. But we hold off until we have the additional yeah. information. Yeah, in writing. We'll prepare a response to that May 22nd letter. I think that makes sense. So, a couple questions um, for our peer reviewer. Um, actually, just one one comment, I guess, to the, to the applicant. Um, the, the site distance profile plan that was provided uh, with the green uh, rejoinder, it, if it's possible to give us a, a larger sheet, it, it's pretty yes. hard to read that yeah that's uh, one of the things we can do um, <laughs> so with the more so with the written response yeah, I know you're gonna provide an updated plan right right and then on the speed I, I thought we already knew what the speed was I, I thought we had the 85th percentile speed at 37 miles an hour is that so what happened was that at, at the last meeting what they did was they had explained that the uh, their speed study was done closer to the school rather than closer to the driveway. So they're going to go back out. Th they're going to get more information. Okay. 
to be able to support that. Okay. Hmm. He wants to say something. The speed study information. I don't think you know. We want to get everything in writing first because I haven't. But as far as the speed study, can you confirm the 85th percentile at least? Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Jason Sobel. I'm with Green International. We're the uh, traffic engineering consultant on this project. And uh, we had, a, as, uh, as I think uh, the town's peer reviewer mentioned, a, uh, a helpful and collaborative conference call uh, a couple days ago. And in that time, we've collected some additional data and, and, and revised some plans. Uh, we haven't yet had time to issue a formal response to these comments, uh, wh which we first saw um, a little over 24 hours ago. Um, that said, uh, we have done some additional speed tests, uh, 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 speed runs through the area to get a better understanding of the travel speeds in the vicinity of the site driveway, um, which is closer to the town center area than the speeds were initially measured north of the site drive. Um, as was just mentioned, the, the 85th percentile speeds north of the site drive were, were about 37 miles an hour. Uh, and, and what we've measured uh, in the last day or so uh, is 30, an average of 31 miles per hour southbound and an average of 26 miles per hour northbound. Um, and, and that's sort of consistent with our expectations um, in regards to uh, as folks uh, are slowing down as they approach the town center and the site driveway is uh, a couple hundred feet north of the roadway, uh, the railway rather, and uh, folks haven't yet fully accelerated into the, the faster speed zone north of the site. Uh, so those speed, uh, speeds that we found and measured now are, are sort of consistent with our expectations just and our knowledge of the area. Is average the same as 85th percentile? No, it's not. Well, you said that the average speeds were that. What, is that Right. How does that translate to the 85th percentile? So, uh, you know, it's, it's statistics, 85th percentile speed is defined as the speed at or below which 85% of the cars are traveling. Um, the data that we've collected in the past couple of days uh, are, are based on uh, the floating car methodology and travel time runs, essentially, and is, is a little less comprehensive than, than the ATR data that we collected farther north of the site. So we're, we're going to continue to collect data on that. I think generally what we're finding with our preliminary speed runs uh, in response to that peer review is that the speeds are slower as you approach the village, which would give us more room for our sight distances. Um, so we'll confirm exactly you know, what those numbers are as far as the 85th percentile. And I, I think it's important to you know, have a chance to respond in writing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we've also. Uh, in the past couple of days, have revised the site uh, site distance plan in conjunction with Outback Engineering, and uh, it, if the board is interested in seeing that revised plan, certainly it will be submitted uh, back to the town and the peer reviewer for the full review. Um, but we do have it here, and, and we can discuss it tonight if if the board would like. And okay, um, Chris, did you have a question? I had a, I had a question. How do you when you do your your analysis over the last couple of days. I mean, May this month and uh, the end of April is little league season, so the traffic going in to the schools by the Grange is much greater than it is any other time during the year in Norfolk. So the traffic is traditionally slower, but this is only for a two month, month and a half period of the year. In summer, we don't have baseball, we don't have summer football. In the fall, we don't have baseball. In the winter, we don't have baseball. So the traffic speed is much greater uh, 10 months out of the year than it is the two-month period that we have Little League. Because Little League, if you look at the parking lots, they're all filled over at the Freeman Kennedy School for only that two-month period. And I walk that school every day, twice a day, so I can actually tell you how many lots in that school are filled up all year long. And I walk in the morning and I walk in at night. How does your analysis take into account this phenomena, which I'll call Little League, that doesn't <coughs> exist 10 months out of the year? I, I certainly understand the point you're making. Um, the driveway to the school is farther north of the site, uh, sort of in, in the vicinity of, of where we measured our original speeds. And, and the roadway is a little bit different character 
up in that area than it is in the area of the site drive near the railroad tracks here. But there is a there is an acceleration. I mean, if I own if everybody owned Teslas, I know it would be 2.6 seconds for 60 miles an hour, but they don't. So there is a there is a period of acceleration, and obviously, if cars are stopping to enter or exit that school at this new driveway, it's certainly going to affect. I think your speed limits, and that's what I'm that's what I'm concerned at. And I just do you do you take that into account, or is that something that does not take be taken into account? And how do we how do we overcome that? Well, we've been in discussions with uh, town staff in regards to additional measures uh, to, to raise the awareness of, of the lower speed limit in the area of the town center, additional signage and, and things of that nature. I, I don't think we've finalized those conversations, but we've had productive conversations. Okay. Al, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Thank you. <laughs> Ray, is this your last meeting? No. You have one more? Thank you. I, uh, I thought it may be Ray's last meeting, and I was going to say that. Were you going to pay him a tribute? I was. <laughs> I'll save <laughs> it for the next meeting, maybe. But I, I thank the board for uh, recommending that reduction in 12 units. I think that's, you know, sitting on this side of the mic, I think that we're all in agreement that we'd like to see that reduction of the 12 units uh, that you recommended. Thank you. Uh, I had a question, uh, jumping back a little bit to the <coughs> drainage. Just state your name, please. Uh, my name's Devin Howe. Um, I heard a comment that the infiltration rate was not what it was originally calculated to be. And correct me if I'm wrong, the proposed alternative because the infiltration rate was actually lower than calculated, fill material is going to be used in place to increase the infiltration rate. Is that a correct assumption? Yes, for the, for the. Um, what I had stated was in the locations that Beta had pointed out um, we were using a higher infiltration rate based on the fact that um, it's easier if I can kind of show it pictorially. Go to the grading sheet. Sheet three, I believe. Uh, go back a couple of sheets. Okay, uh, right here. So I think uh, one of the beds was in this location and one of them was in this location. So at those two particular locations, the, the road is at a slope <laughs> and the existing grade is at a slope. So we install the beds at a level elevation and we're actually cutting into the site at, on one end and filling on the other end and uh, beta pointed out that we were um, uh, the bottom of the bed would actually be in what we refer to as the B horizon of the the soil profile and so we're going to have to remove that B horizon and get down to the underlying more permeable soil and replace that with sand it's a pretty common technique that is done for drainage so this, are you using the infiltration rate for the sand that you're putting in yes, place? Yes, the underlying sand, which is below the, that area, natural. the natural existing sand. Okay, so you're matching the infiltration rate for the natural occurring right. soil which in is that area. Right. Okay. I, I just didn't quite understand that. How much lateral fill do you have on that road? Hey, Al, Al you got to raise your hand. You just can't blurt out a question. you got a little protocol. you got to use it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. You didn't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> One finger or two. <laughs> um, right back at you. Uh, at the lateral, uh, outside that dig out for the drainage, how much uh, fill is being uh, put outside that? And what's holding the water? Is there a retaining wall? At that point that you were describing a second ago? 
Um, Not at the locations that we're talking about now. No retaining walls. Okay. Seeing no other questions, no other concerns from the board. Why don't we um, take out our calendars and, and get the uh, work date set up for next week? Fisher, what do you got? What's your calendar look like? You name it. Ray, what do we got? Uh, when's a good day to get together? I can't. You're going. You're going away. Huh? You're going away. Right? We're saying who's going from the board. You're going. I'm going. You're going. Okay. Um. Any days, Ray, that you can suggest? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. How about um, Wednesday? Sorry, which well, Is Wednesday good for you, gentlemen? 31st. Tuesday, Wednesday? Is that the 31st of May? It should be 31st. 31st. Oh, okay. Well, yes, uh, it's Monday. Yes. That'll be the 31st. 31st is um, Wednesday. Let, let's do this. Um, Monday's a holiday, right? Right. Thursday? Monday's a holiday. Thursday because the council can't make it on Okay, Thursday. Thursday's good. Do you want lawyers at this meeting or is it? Um, what, what's the date on Thursday? I'm traveling. I'm in first. I wasn't planning on coming. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> first. Okay, I'm out of town. Um, no, but seriously, Mike, who do you want there? Is it you and Ray? Ray. Um, or Tuesday, the third, the thirtieth. What's Tuesday? Uh, <coughs> yeah, I'm I'm flying out Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm I'm, I'm out, of, out of pocket Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Oh, so you can, Wednesday doesn't work for you. Wednesday, yeah, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm out. Uh, unless we can open up a town hall on Friday. And, uh, yeah, Dan, I think you should be there. You, you're definitely going to plan to be there. Good. So, okay, so you want us there? Yes. Okay. Um, so what day are you looking at? <laughs> Friday. And then we do the following Monday. June 5th. All right, we can do the following Monday. All right, why don't we do the following Monday? We're out Tuesday, Wednesday. So the only lead is Friday. Town Hall is closed on Friday. So All right. the following Monday. How about the 5th? June 5th. What's the, what time are you thinking, though, Mike? Uh, yeah. We're here, so you, you gentlemen are traveling. So what's the distance? What time is? I can do the afternoon or evening. I can't do. I have a, a conflict between ten and two, <laughs> but I can do after two o'clock. Okay, so you want to say three o'clock? That's preferable. Four would be better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that way we're not hitting bad traffic still. I think All right. it's. So what's the date? June fifth. Fifth. June fifth. June fifth. Monday the fifth. And it's four o'clock. Four o'clock. And who's going to be? Uh, Just hang on. Go ahead. Who's going to be attending? I don't know who your who Bishop oh, wants from 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 our side. Myself and Dan and Ray and Bill and Bill. Uh, whoever you uh, want there. Yes, sir. Uh, that was my question. Is who? It, it, this is that meeting you were referring to, the private meeting uh, from the ZBA, was going to be representing the town. Uh, yeah. Myself, Bill, Dan, and Ray. And that meeting is going to take place. What, when was it? June fifth. June fifth, four o'clock. Thank you. Uh, are we, Mr. Chairman, are we going to set up uh, uh, the next hearing now, or? or yes. You have to continue to have the next hearing date set. Yeah, we already have it set up. We have a date already established, Fisher, which is uh, 621. 621. Next ZBA meeting? Seven nineteen. Seven nineteen. What? What is that? No. Six twenty-one. Six twenty-one. Do we have a time yet, Amy, for the hearing? Um, there's nothing else that day. If you want to do seven fifteen? Seven fifteen, Bishop. Seven. 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 Seven.
Okay, so has everyone got uh, that in their uh, calendars? Yeah, yeah. Has there been another meeting scheduled after that? As far as we could look farther ahead, if there is one already. If not, then no problem. We can schedule it later. But if there's already been a meeting scheduled, I'd take it on the calendar. Seven what? Seven five? Se no, seven. I thought we were going back and forth between. Oh, seven nine. Excuse me. Seven seven five is the other. What would it be? Seven nineteen. Seven nineteen. Seven nineteen. Okay. okay. Doing the class, column seven. Gotcha. Nice. I think we've uh, concluded our business for tonight regarding this project. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to to um, have to make a motion for the next hearing. Continue to continue the public hearing. 425 Rockwood Road, Village of Norfolk, to 62117 at 7:15 p.m. to discuss traffic analysis, underlying engineering studies, and landscaping, and any new business. From the working session. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Good night. All right. Let's uh, take a peek at our minutes and get those approved. Because we love you. We love you. Because we love you. Because we love you. I had to reprimand you, but everyone else got the message out. I love you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, guys. I'm going to close them. As an attorney? Yeah. And so why didn't you have it? I'm trying to read this early. I'm trying to read this early. What do we have for uh, minutes? April 19th. April 19th. I don't know if that's your aim. I don't know if I did. You voted. Okay. I know, but she has Okay. No, you have you as president. Yeah, We've corrected yeah, that. Yeah, I correct you. Okay. But yeah. if you want to sit on it, then I would do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. John was down. To, we found that. Yeah. An error. Do we have to correct that? I, we yeah. already did. Yeah, because he came so in late. That was the problem. Yeah, yeah, oh, there was something, okay. there was something right. sneaky about you last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was just there from a previous time. <laughs> so a previous time, it wasn't there. All right. Just put Don. Good ride home. Thank you. All right. When's the next? When's the other one? Uh, six seven. Oh yeah, you should do about that one. Two seven. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be a full house. Maybe moving to the elementary school. Good night. I don't know if we'll go that far. See, next time, okay, the 21st is going to be the next one for this. Great. I've got a cough up at night, but I might be able to have Caitlin or somebody else cover that one up. Okay. All right, very well. Okay. Thanks, All right, Dan, have a good night. Thank you. All right, has everyone had a chance to review these minutes? Yes. Amy, the, uh, you corrected the Don Hansen. Um, there is a little wordsmithing I think you have to do. I'm going to get my copy, which I don't find great. Which page is that? Did you correct where Betsy says, Betsy has an area where she basically just says blah, 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 blah. She doesn't give any information. Did you try to see where it was? No, I don't know what um, that is. Let me look. Okay, she's got Al Quigley area. Mr. Q, yeah, I mean, there's some like on page four or six. She's got Mr. Q expressed concerns with units 
under Al Kigley, area owner of 194, third, third line, Mr. Q expressed concerns with units. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So be Mr. Quigley <laughs> Harry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that's that's me. I did yeah. That. Then almost the second to last line, the same paragraph. She's got case study in the M matter of New York. Should be the case matter of New York. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, there. Uh, I apologize, and um, I didn't bring my uh, I didn't bring my version, but there was a couple of other. Just to look, just take one more little bit of wordsmithing. It goes back from the um, current tense to the past tense to the future tense in some areas. Okay. And if you want, I'll give you my copy tomorrow. I'll send it over to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I got a couple of things on there. But that was it was all just grammatical, nothing in content. Did you pick up the, um, I'm sorry, Chris, if I didn't hear you, but did you pick up the, um, there's a typo there, it's Mr. Q? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you just mentioned that. Mr. Q, who has sensitive feelings. Mr. Q. <laughs> yeah. we, we could establish that it's going to be his code name for the rest of this. Yes. How about just Q? Just Q. <laughs> Bond. Yes. James Bond. James Q. Mr. Q. Chairman, I make a motion to accept the April 19, 2017 ZBA meetings um, as amended. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, oh, motion to adjourn? Oh, wait a minute. Before we adjourn, um, I don't know if a site walk's necessary for that uh, variance. I mean, I'm not going to go. Because I've been by and looked at it. Yeah, we have, we, get, we have a layout delay. I'm not quite sure, like these budding houses. I think we don't have any information on that. Yeah. It might be, I mean, it might be a valuable exercise to have a site walk. We can do it independently or we can do it together, or do it as a board. I'm, I'm just traveling a lot, so I know. Well, if we just pass by, will we see everything we want to see in terms of a house? They're going to come back with a survey anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all we need to do is just take a look from the curb, and we yeah. can see the houses on both sides. Yeah. Right. Don't, we don't really see what's behind. It's probably just empty, right? Right. Okay. Right. And I know he bought the adjoining land. Right. All right. So I can pass by my own. I don't need to schedule right. it. Is everyone comfortable with that? Sure. We call it curb individual. Read. Yeah. What? Curb read. A curb, curb read. No, we're going to get the survey of the actual distances, though, right? But we'll get a, a, a view. Just right. Exactly. But then we'll have to be backed up by the numbers, which is what you, you know, asked for. Okay, um, motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting April 24th at 9.47 p.m. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Uh, Mr.